Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can see in the picture today, we will start the story of What if Izuka was the reincarnation of the legendary assassin Hit, reborn as a human in the world of heroes. As memories of his past life emerge, Izuka must navigate his lethal skills and assassin instincts, while striving to become the world's greatest hero. Can he reconcile his deadly past with his heroic aspirations? Join us as we explore this unique twist in Izuku's journey. But before I start, we are so close to hit 1k subscribers, so please do subscribe. And check out the description to support the original author. Now let's start the story. In an alternate universe, the universe of the legendary assassin Hit was just erased during the Tournament of Power. In the final moments as Hit was waiting for himself and his universe known as the Sixth Universe was about to get erased from existence, he thought to himself, if only I could have done more and been able to defeat Jiren, then this wouldn't have happened. And thus was he gone from existence, or so he was led to believe. It turns out that the Omni Kings sent HYT's soul to another reality altogether rather than simply erasing him. The Omni Kings liked how much they enjoyed seeing the legendary assassin fight, so they gave him another chance at life but in another universe. On an alternate earth, I opened my eyes completely surprised that I was alive and still existing, but I felt different, and my body felt strange. I find myself in a room that looks like it's meant for a small child. I get up from the bed that I am currently on and look in front of a mirror to see my reflection, but I have a different face and voice. It was at that moment that the Grand Priest arrived to inform me about what was going on. Hello, Hitler. I should say hello, Izuka Midoriya because that is who you reincarnated as per the wish of the Omni Kings, said the Grand Priest. What? replied Hitler. You see, the Omni Kings enjoyed watching you fight so much that they decided that instead of erasing you along with the rest of the Sixth Universe, they would reincarnate you into this new reality, where you can continue to live as you have always done, but with a few new surprises. First things first, I need to tell you that this Earth has humans with powers that they refer to as quirks. Although not all humans have these quirks, only about 20% don't, and the rest do, but that won't be a problem for someone as great as you. But you will still need to work on training the human body that you're currently in and gain back your physical might. Plus in this world, humans can't use their quirks without a hero license, so you should be aware of that fact. And one last thing, your memories of the person that you are now will be automatically put into your mind, so you're all caught up this the current date and time and the physiology of your old body has been added to your human body, and thus your training should go smoothly as it did in your old life. Well, that's everything that I needed to inform you about. Have a nice new life, Izuka Midoriya said the Grand Priest as he left. It's point of view, okay. Based on what the Grand Priest told me, I still possess all my prior knowledge, powers, and abilities, but all I need to do is train my weak human body to be able to handle my power. Otherwise I could seriously injure myself. It doesn't matter if I have to retrain my body, or in this case, train my new human body. I will become stronger, and this time I won't fail my job. But wait, this world is already supposed to have heroes or protectors or whatever, so why am I even here? I guess the Omni Kings just like to be entertained, and it's not like I can stop them. My memories seem to be filled with fear for some reason. It seems like I was afraid before regaining my memories from my previous life. It doesn't matter. I will just adjust to my current circumstance and begin training this body. It shouldn't take too long after all. Having accumulated knowledge for over a 1,000 years tends to come in handy when dealing with unexpected events. 8 a.m. same day. The door to my room opens and a woman comes in with the same type of features as my new self. Thus I surmise that this is my mother. However... Having the memories before this time also helped me out, and I began to see that this woman was kind and a hardworking person. Izuku, honey, it's time for us to go to the quirk doctor and to see what quirk you will be getting, said in Kamidoria. The appointment is at 10.30 a.m. so we better get going. Okay, honey? Okay, mom, said Izuku, hit with a little bit of hesitation because he hadn't gotten used to the idea that this woman known as in Kamidoria was his mother so he was at a loss of how he should act because he was a 1,000-year-old man before being reincarnated. Then 30 a.m. at the doctor's office. Hello, Miss Anko Midoriya, and this young boy must be your son Izuka Midoriya, correct? Yes, Anko replied. 
Hello, Izuku. Can you please come with me? And we can get started to determine what quirk you will be having, said the quirk doctor. Very well, responded Izuku. Hit, in a well-mannered voice and tone that was surprising for a young child. Both Inko and the quirk doctor expected him to act out with more of an energetic response. Moving on to the tests that were done rather quickly, the quirk doctor told both Inko and Izuku that he doesn't know for sure if he does have a quirk because his body is different than a normal person's, such as having a higher pain tolerance, durability, density, etc. However, it is unlikely that Izuku will develop a quirk, because looking at his x-ray, he has an extra joint in his toe, and those individuals with quirks have no use for this extra joint, so he should give up on any dreams of becoming a hero. 1.30 p.m. at the doctor's office. In Izuku's mind, this has been a rather interesting turn of events. First I lost the battle against Jirun, lost my universe, got reincarnated by the Omni Kings, and now I'm human with a new mother in another universe. This can't get any stranger. Hello, Izuku, said Inko repeatedly. Sorry, what? I didn't listen. I was deep in thought, said Izuku. Son, it seems that you won't be getting a quirk, and are quirkless. Are you going to be okay with this after all? It's your dream to become a hero like All Might, isn't it? Asked Inko with sadness in her voice and a frown on her face. Yeah, but it's fine besides that just means that I have to work harder than everyone else, so I won't let this discourage me, replied Izuku. Also, if I want to become stronger, I don't have the luxury of cutting corners by relying on a quirk, so I just have to do it the old-fashioned way by improving. Inko and the quirk doctor were taken aback by the way Izuku was acting, but then brushed it off as him dealing with the fact that he is quirkless and won't show that he's disappointed. 2.30 p.m. back home. Inko and Izuku arrive back home, and Izuku says that he will be in his room doing some warm-up exercises. He explains to his mother that if he is going to do his best job at being a hero in the future, he will need to get into fighting shape. Inko thinks to herself, Izuku sure is acting differently than he was yesterday. Maybe he's trying to act calm and not try to worry me? Oh well, if my son wants to do this, then I will support him 100%. Okay, Izuku, you go and do your warm-up exercises, and Izuku will start preparing the food for dinner. Because exercise makes you hungry, said Enko. Yes, mother, thank you for your aid in my quest to become a hero. 4.45 p.m. in Izuku's room. I am Izuku Midoriya now but I am still the legendary assassin hit of the sixth universe, even if my former universe is gone from existence. I'll start by doing basic stretches as to prepare my muscles and not strain them. Next, doing push-ups, sit-ups, side-to-side crunches, squats, and so on. These exercises were just the beginning. Following the training of my human body, I needed to get my Kai under my control again. Thus meditation was a necessary part of my training to remaster my powers and abilities. Plus, I want to be able to use my time-skip technique as soon as possible with this human body. It will present a challenge. But then again, being an assassin always had its fair share of challenges. Back with Inko, Izuka seems to have put much time and effort into what he wants to become. But as his mother, I should do everything that I can to help him. Maybe I should make him foods that are both nutritious and healthy. A good diet is key to helping a young boy grow to be strong. 7.30 p.m. in the living room. Inko calls out for Izuku and says that lunch is ready and that she made tuna fish sandwiches, buffalo shrimp lettuce wraps, tempeh and broccoli rabirikiet, and his favorite food, quetzadine, and freshly squeezed orange juice, or if he wants, he can just have some water. Now take your pick, anything you choose is fine. Izuka goes down to where his mother is and happily eats a little of each of these foods and drinks, and gives his mother a thank you and a hug because it's always polite to do so with your family. After finishing his food, Inko smelled Izuku and said that by the smell of your clothes, you should take a bath and since he is four, she bathes him which made Izuku hit very uncomfortable. So once that was finished the rest of the day went by as normal, until the next day at school came. The next day in school. Everyone at school was waiting to ask what quirk Izuka got from his parents. Once they asked him he simply said that he doesn't have one, and that he is quirk less like he really didn't care in the slightest. With his friend, Katsuki Bakugo, or as Izuka calls him, Ketchin replies with that so basically you're useless, and won't become a hero. Izuka simply said, I don't think that having a quirk means that because I am still going to become a hero in the future. 
Hearing this statement made the whole class laugh at Izuku, and he didn't care or understand what is it they all thought was funny because of how serious he was. As the day went by, the class went on to lunchtime, and Bakugo was showing off his explosion quirk that he was so proud of and began using it on a bunch of rocks, and then he began using it on a defenselessly kid which did not go unnoticed by Izuku. I made my way over to help my fellow classmate and told Bakugo that using your quirk on another person, especially without a hero license is not allowed, and that if you continue to do so, then I will stop you. I told Bakugo with a hint of anger in my voice. Bakugo and his goons just started to laugh and shouted that deck you're less than useless than this kid because you don't have a quirk so get out of my way or we'll use you as my punching bag. And when Bakugo said that the next moment he realized he was on the ground with Izuka holding him down stating, don't say that I didn't warn you and knock out Bakugo. Meanwhile, the two goons that he was with said, I thought you didn't have a quirk with nervousness in their voices. I don't. That was just a normal speed and a technique of mine. Now I recommend you stop bullying this kid and take Bakuga back to the nurse. Said Izuka with a cold and calm voice that made the two goons scared. The two left with Bakugo and the rest of the day went on about how Izuku stopped Bakugo without a quirk. Once Bakugo woke up and remembered that he was going to keep picking on the weak kid from his class with a lame quirk Deku showed up then everything went blank. Deku must have used a dirty trick that's the only explanation. Back in the class, everyone was talking about what happened between Izuku and Bakugo and couldn't believe what had happened. Not even the teachers could believe it. And even though Izuku was lying about being quirkless, the school called Inko and she confirmed with the school that he was quirkless. Izuku explained that he was protecting a fellow classmate from Bakugu, that he wouldn't listen to him when he said that. Using his quirk on someone with a hero license was not allowed, thus I had no choice but to stop him. The teachers and my mother looked at me like I had done something weird, but to me, it was something that needed to be done. The teachers got all the details from me and they had called Bakugo's parents to have a serious talk about using his quirk on someone else was not going to fly well. However, I heard that he was let off with a warning and that I would receive a detention for what I did. The teachers only see students with powerful quirks as someone to protect, and they saw me as someone that needed to learn a lesson. Not that I cared either way because I had done the right thing. Inko looked at her son proud that he defended someone, but didn't like the fact that her son was the one punished even though Bakugo was the one that did the bullying. Small time skip. At El Dara Middle School, as the years went on, I have continued my training and am now able to use the full range of my powers and abilities with little to no effort, but I continue to train in order to make sure that I won't be defeated like I did against Jiran. It was the final year of my middle school life, but nothing else had changed much from Bakugo trying to attack me daily, but those attempts failed as he couldn't even touch me thanks to my time-skipping technique which I can use again. Every time he tried to do anything to me or others, I would always stop him before he could even realize what was happening. Plus, nobody can see me when I time-skip. I was never the center of attention, thus, I was left alone and was avoided because my classmates saw me as the quirkless kid that nobody wanted to interact with because they were afraid of Bakugo bullying them. Our teacher shows up to the classroom and tells us that we need to think about what we want to be in the future but then he throws all the career aptitude tests and says, who am I kidding? I know you all want to be heroes, and the class starts using their quirks in class except for me because I am quirkless and I am not a show-off like someone I know. Hey, teach don't lump me in with these losers, they will be lucky if they can be sidekicks to some busted-up D-lister hero, Bakugo shouted with his cocky attitude. Everyone else said, screw you, Bakugo, we're just as good as you, and Bakugo yelled, bring it on. I'll take you all on at once. Oh yes, Katsuki Bakugo, you had a high score in the mock tests and did very well in all subjects, and with that quirk of yours, you're sure to get into UA high school. Wait, but doesn't UA have a 0.2 acceptance rate? said one of the students. Yeah, and that's why I am the only one from this crappy school to get into UA. Then become the future number one hero that surpasses all might and become the richest hero of all time, and it all starts with UA. Hi. Oh yes, Midoriya, you also applied to UA. With Izuku just nodding his while reading a book. Bakugi yelled, What do you think you can compete with Midoku? You're worse than these rejects. You're quirkless, you'll die in the exams. It doesn't matter how smart or buff you are because without a quirk, you'll never make it in. 
I reply saying that it's my choice to do so, Bakugu, and you can't tell me otherwise because you don't control my life or my decisions. At the end of the day, I was getting ready to leave and continue training back home. It was just then I spotted Bakuga coming over to my desk. So with time skip, I left without any confrontation because I was not in the mood for any of his nonsense. A above, I'll show that bastard Deku that he doesn't deserve to go to the UA. And that I am the best. I'm going over to yell at the damn nerd only to see that he's already gone. What the hell? Where did you go Deku? Come face me like a man and take a beating from me. Back with Izuku, he's so loud. Whatever, it doesn't matter what he thinks of me. I'll just keep doing my job and train my body to get my full power back and even surpass it. As I was making my way home, I sensed that something was approaching me and a quirky moved out of the way of some sort of creature made from what I can observe as mud or more accurately, sludge. I saw that he was having a panic attack while at the same time trying to catch me. Sludge villain. Hey, kid, I need your body to escape. I didn't know that the freak was in town, said the villain as he at whatever, was attempting to acquire what I heard about its disgusting mouth and that it wanted my body. Being left with no alternative options, I saw that this creature's eyes were the only thing that would be solid, and thus I launched an attack into its eyes, both blinding it, as well as incapacitating it from moving due to it being in tremendous pain, and finally I knock it out with the force of my fist. Once that was accomplished, I made my way out of the vicinity as an unknown presence was fast approaching my current location, thus I swiftly vacated only to see the number one hero, All Might, arrive. He looked confused to see the creature that I disabled on the ground and wondered who may have been responsible for this unexpected event. However, he brushed it off as dumb luck and left with the creature by placing it in what looked like liquid containers. So this is All Might. I must confess his Kai is strong, but he seems to be slowly degrading as time moves forward. I am puzzled as to why that is, but it wouldn't change anything or benefit me in any way so it wouldn't matter in the slightest. Sludge Villain Incident As All Might was leaving for the police station, he was completely been unaware that he dropped the water bottles, that he had placed the villain in only to have him escape and continue his rampage with the hostage being as a shield so the heroes at the scene can't engage with harming the hostage. Damn, we don't have the right quirks for this job, said in frustration by death arms. I can't help without causing more damage, said Mount Lady. I have my hands full with these flames, replied Backdraft. I'm no good in this situation because my armor quirk's weakness is fire, said Kamui Woods, a few moments aged with Bakugu. Hey, Bakugo, don't you think that you should stop trying to fight with Midoriya? I mean, you guys used to be friends, right? Plus you are stronger than him, right? So why try to pick a fight? Asked Bakugo's goons. What do you think that Deku is better than me? No, we just think that it's a waste of time for you, so why bother him? That piece of shit thinks that he's better than me, just because. He's smart, and has higher grades than me, but doesn't mean crap without a quirk. Someone needs to let that nerd know the truth that he is useless and will never become a hero or go to UA. Hi. Looking at a bottle on the ground, Bakuga kicks it out of frustration, and with that kick the sludge villain emerges taking him as a hostage. Back in present time, Izuka's POV, I see that a large crowd of people are viewing something that seems to be causing some sort of commotion. Out of curiosity, I make my over to the front with my time skip, only to be confused as why the creature that attempted to control my body was suddenly in this public area. It seems that fool All Might didn't finish his job to send this thing into custody. Whatever, I'll deal with this. With time skip, I stop time for everyone except for me. I grab that nitwit Bakugu and bring him towards the heroes, and with a concentered Kai blast, I send the creature into a state of suspended animation, leaving it unable to move. Once that was done I seized my time skip allowing time to move again. Everyone in the vicinity is at a loss of words as to what just happened. One moment the villain was rampaging, the next he wasn't moving, and the hostage was just fine. Who? What? When? How? Sighs of relief were heard when they thought maybe it doesn't matter, it was over now, right? All Might thought to himself the same thing and was glad that his mistake was resolved. In another part of Musotafa City. Yes, hello? Yes, I am on my way to the target. This won't take too long. I'll report back soon. 
Thank you for your patience and you know me, but now I never let a target get away. Walking into an unknown facility, I make my way over to the top floor of this location to fulfill my assigned duty for the day. In the elevator, things have gotten interesting today, but I wouldn't overlook anything as an accident. Guard 1. Hey, are we expecting any visitors at this hour? Guard 2. No, not that I have heard of. With the guards prepared to kill whoever is riding the elevator as opens up, and the guards see no one. Hey, there's no body in here. Keep looking, they couldn't have gotten far. Boss villain, whoever it is, it doesn't matter, they can't stop all of us. Ding, I am here to kill you. And who the hell are you supposed to be, kid? If you must know I'm hit. Wait, did you say hit? The legendary assassin. What are you fools waiting for? Kill this guy. It's no use time has stopped for everyone except for you and I. Bam here, take this out. Came an air attack which I dodge easily. Your resistance is pointless, said Hit with a cold tone. Look, I got loads of money. How much do you want? Heck, you can have my whole fortune I'll even throw in this tower. What do you say? The boss villain panicked. Not a chance, Hit said. Without hesitation I blast him with my phantom fist. I deliver an instant kill to the boss villain, then leave completing my job. Guard 1 and 2. Hey, what just happened? Did you see anything? No, but that doesn't matter. Hey boss, wake up, boss. Hello, this is Hit. The job is done. I'm heading back now. Good job, Hit. Man, ever since we recruited you, kid, you've made our jobs a lot easier to do. Yeah, I know but you shouldn't overlay on any single assassin. I mean, you STL I have your other top assassin, and sure, she has been meaning to some work herself. Yeah, anyway, see you when you come home hit. Yeah, hit over and out. Flashback. Izuku, age 10, I am currently walking with my other to the store and purchase groceries for dinner tonight. My mother said that she was going to prepare my favorite food katsudan, and I must admit the food was surprisingly good so I was looking forward to this. Our trip to the store was cut short when villain with what looks like a gun quirk and his crew made their way out the place. One civilian had already called the heroes and police to apprehend these villains, but they would take about 15 minutes to arrive, which gave this guy lots of time to wreak havoc. I informed my mother that we should make our way outside and throw the back of the store. She agreed and started moving with me, but as soon as the gun quirk villain saw movement, he grabbed my mother and said to everyone that if they don't want to see this woman killed, then to do what he says. The villain threatening my mother is something I will never forgive. I use my incomplete time skip to safely grab my mother pulling her away from these villains. Wait, what happened? Said the villains confused. I walk up to them and with my speed knock out all the villains successfully saving everyone in the store and preventing any further damage to the environment around me. The police and heroes arrive and arrest the villain group. Then they get everyone's statement with them all saying the same thing that a kid saved them all and took down the villains. They were going to scold at me for my actions and charge me for illegal quirk usage, but I explained to them that I am quirkless, and with the detective Nam Asatsukachi quirk allowed them to see that I was telling the truth, so I wasn't able to be charged with anything. However, they still said that I should have waited for the heroes and police for help. I told them coldly that they threatened my mother, and that is something that I won't let slide. I was then allowed to leave home with my mother, but before we left, the store owner said they wanted to give us some free groceries as a thank you which we humbly accepted. Later that day we had a knock at our door with a group of people wearing black suits asking to be allowed inside for a talk. Having no room for disagreeing, my mother let the people inside asking if they wanted anything to drink which they politely declined. They asked my mother if they could also talk to me. Izuku, can you come down here, sweetie? There are some people that would like to speak to both of us. Hearing my mother's voice, I make way to the living room, unfazed by the fact that people are in my home regarding my actions earlier today. Hello, young man. We would first like to say thank you for your good work at the store. Your actions and the way in which you moved was like a professional martial artist. By any chance, do you have a master that taught you these moves? No, I am self-taught in everything that I do, Izuka said with a calm voice that made these government suits have chills run down their spines. Well, this brings us to our next question. What quirk do you have? I am quirkless. 
Wait, but then how do you move so fast? I train a lot in order to gain more power, that's all. Okay, but we would like to confirm this later which brings us to our final question. Would you allow us to financially support you as you go about your school life and growth to become a hero in the future? Our organization is called the Hero Public Safety Commission, or the HPSC for short. After witnessing your skills, we came to the conclusion that we can make you into a great hero and if you work with us, we can guarantee that both you and your mother will benefit from this. But there are a few conditions. Okay. And what are these conditions? Asked Inko with a worried look of her face. We would monitor your son's skills and abilities in our training facility. He will take on jobs which we will assign for him, and he will provide updates for each of these assignments. I don't know about this, Inko said with worry in her voice. Please excuse us for a moment, mother come with me. What is it, Izuku? I think we should accept this offer that has been granted to us. What? Izuku, I don't think. Mother, I know that times have gotten exceedingly burdensome since father left you having to raise me all on your own because of my lack of a quirk. But if these people can lessen your load, then I strongly believe it would be in our best interest to take them up on this offer. Think it over a few minutes and looking into Izuku's eyes, I can see that he is determined to do this. Sighing okay, but just be careful, Izuku. Smiling at his mother, Izuku thanks her and gives her a hug. Well, we accept this, but under a few conditions of my own. Fine, name them. 1. You will not lie to me under any circumstance. 2. I will handle these jobs given to me alone, and in any way I see fit. And 3. You will never bring harm to my mother, that's all. Very well, we can agree to this but only because we see a lot of potential in you. As a show of good faith, we will give you this. Taking out a white letter, we open it to see a check for one million, then we shall keep in touch and see you sometime soon. End of flashback. Bureau Public Safety Commission Headquarter. Welcome back, Hid. I see that you have completed another job for us, said the president. Yes, I have done what you asked of me, replied Hid. Well, we have a new assignment for you. And what would this new job require of me? Well, it's nothing too big for someone of your level of skills and power. As you know that you are going to be attending UA High, but we want you to do two things while attending. The first is keep tabs on All Might to see why is going to be a teacher there, and the other is be a bodyguard for one Momo, Yurozu, as a special request from her father, as he wants her to be looked after in UA. So basically keep a watchful eye on All Might, and safely protect Momo, Yorazu, as the the gist of it. Yes, right down to the point as always, Hit. Well, that will be all you may go know. Then please excuse me, said Hit. Yue, hi, here we are at last. Well, my job begins now and I won't fail. With Hit, I can't believe it has been five years since I accepted to work with the Hero Public Safety Commission as their best assassin and future hero. Not to mention resolving that issue they had with Lady Nagant. Flashback. Inko Midoriya nervously clutched her purse as she followed her son, Izuka Midoriya, through the towering gates of the Hero Public Safety Commission's facility. It was an extraordinary opportunity for Izuku, as they had invited him to assess his powers and abilities, despite not having a quirk like most aspiring heroes. Inko couldn't help but feel a mix of excitement and trepidation, as she wondered what lay ahead for her son. As they entered the testing site, A team of scientists and professionals welcomed them. One of the researchers, Dr. Yamada, approached them with a warm smile. Welcome, Midoriya-san, Izuka-kun. We are thrilled to have you here today. We have devised a series of tests to determine the extent of your abilities. Please follow me. Izuka nodded eagerly, his eyes filled with determination. Thank you for this opportunity, Dr. Yamada. I'm excited to see what I can do. They led the pair into a large testing chamber filled with high-tech equipment. The room was equipped with sensors, holographic projectors, and computer consoles that monitored every aspect of the tests. Dr. Yamada explained the first test to Izuku and Inko. For the initial test, Izuku-kun, we will measure your physical strength and speed. Please step onto the pressure-sensitive platform in the center. Izuku complied, stepping onto the platform with a sense of anticipation. As he flexed his muscles, the platform emitted a feint activating a series of hidden cameras and motion sensors. Again, Dr. Yamada announced, and instantly Izuka moved. 
His body blurred as he executed a series of rapid punches and kicks, causing shock waves to ripple through the air. The scientists watched in awe as the sensors registered extraordinary levels of strength and agility. Inko gasped, unable to tear her eyes away from her son's incredible display. Izuku, I had no idea. Dr. Yamada nodded in agreement, his eyes wide with amazement. Indeed, Midoriya-san, Izuku-kun possesses power and skill that surpasses what we have seen before. It's truly remarkable. As the testing continued, Izuku showcased various techniques he had developed through intense training. The scientists monitored his energy projection, durability, and reflexes struggling to keep up with his astonishing abilities. Every result displayed on the monitor seemed to break previous records. At one point, Dr. Yamada turned to Inko, his voice filled with astonishment. Midoriya-san, this is unprecedented. Izuku-kun's potential is off the charts. The computers couldn't keep up calculating his results and were overloaded. We've never witnessed anything like this before. Inko's heart swelled with pride and concern for her son's future. She turned to Dr. Yamada, a mix of emotions in her voice. What does this mean for Izuku? Can he become a hero even without a quirk? Dr. Yamada smiled warmly. Absolutely, Midoriya-san. In fact, we wish to offer Izuku-kun an immediate position within the Hero Public Safety Commission. His extraordinary abilities make him an invaluable asset to the hero community. We believe he can achieve greatness. Inko's eyes filled with tears of joy and relief. She hugged her son tightly, whispering words of encouragement. Izuku, my dear, you've come so far. I'm so proud of you. Izuku beamed, his dreams finally within reach. Thank you, Mom. I won't let you down. I'll become the greatest hero the world has ever seen. And so, with the Hero Public Safety Commission overwhelmed by Izuku Midoriya's exceptional powers and abilities, a new chapter began in his heroic journey. The story of a young boy who, despite not possessing a quirk, was destined to become a symbol of hope and inspiration for heroes everywhere. And not just in the shadows. The atmosphere within the Hero Public Safety Commission's control room suddenly turned tense as an urgent alert blared across the monitors. The top hero and renowned assassin working for the commission had turned against them, assassinating the chairman and threatening to expose the organization's hidden operations. Panic filled the room as they realized the gravity of the situation. Dr. Yamada's face displayed a mix of shock and concern as he relayed the information to Izuku and Inko. Midoriya-san, Izuku-kun, this is a dire situation. Our top hero has betrayed us, and she's a force to be reckoned with. We need immediate assistance, but most of our heroes are unavailable. Time is of the essence. Izuku's expression hardened, his resolve unwavering. I can help. You've seen what I'm capable of. Let me handle this. I'll confront her and try to resolve the situation peacefully. If that fails, I'll accept whatever consequences come my way. Inko's eyes widened with concern, her voice laced with worry. Izuku, are you sure about this? It sounds dangerous, and I don't want you to get hurt. Izuku placed a comforting hand on his mother's shoulder, giving her a reassuring smile. I understand your concern, Mom, but if I can prevent any more bloodshed and protect everyone involved, it's worth the risk. Please trust me on this. The room fell silent as the members of the Hero Public Safety Commission exchanged glances, weighing the options before them. After a moment, Director Okamoto spoke up, his voice steady but filled with urgency. We're running out of time, and we need someone who can match Lady Nagan's skill and power. Midoriya, we will grant you the authority to handle this situation your way. However, be aware that the consequences may be severe. Izuka nodded, gratitude shining in his eyes. Thank you for placing your trust in me. I'll do everything I can to resolve this without further harm. Dr. Yamada stepped forward, his voice filled with concern. Izuka-kun, we've witnessed your incredible abilities, but Lady Nagant is a formidable opponent. Do you have a plan? Izuka's determination solidified, his gaze focused. I have an idea. Lady Nagant once fought for justice, so there must be something within her that still believes in it. I'll appeal to that part of her and try to find a peaceful resolution. But if it comes down to a confrontation, I'll do whatever it takes to protect innocent lives. Director Okamoto nodded, 
his voice firm. We understand, Midoriya. You have our full support. Just remember, the outcome of this situation will determine your path within the hero community. Good luck. With their acceptance, Izuku knew the weight of the responsibility that rested on his shoulders. As he prepared to face Lady Nagant, he held on to the hope that he could bring about a resolution that avoided tragedy, exposure, and imprisonment. The battle between Izuku Midoriya, now known as Hit, and Lady Nagant loomed ahead, a clash that would test his resolve and reveal the true power he possessed. Within the high-tech control room of the Hero Public Safety Commission, the monitors flickered with real-time data and surveillance feeds. The search for Lady Nagant was in full swing, and the tension in the room was palpable. Dr. Yamada, accompanied by Director Okamoto, approached Hit, who stood at the center, ready to receive crucial information. It puzzles me as to why Lady Nagant killed the chairman, said Izuku with a voice that genuinely wanted to know the reason behind Lady Nagant's actions. Also, when I am on the job, please refer to me as Hit as a way to make myself discreet, asked Izuku, with them agreeing to it. Within the secure confines of the Hero Public Safety Commission's control room, Dr. Yamada sifted through a trove of classified information, his eyes widening with each revelation. He quickly called Director Okamoto over to share the startling discovery. Director Okamoto, I've uncovered something crucial, Dr. Yamada began, his voice filled with a mix of astonishment and concern. It appears that the former chairman had become corrupted with power, leading to a severe deterioration of his mental state. Director Okamoto's brow furrowed as he absorbed the shocking information. Corrupted? Are you saying that Lady Megan's actions were a response to the chairman's decline? Dr. Yamada nodded solemnly. Yes, Director. The chairman's lust for power drove him to make unethical decisions, harming innocent lives and subverting the very principles the Hero Public Safety Commission stands for. The room fell silent as the magnitude of their realization sunk in. The Hero Public Safety Commission had unwittingly become entangled in a web of corruption, and Lady Nagan's actions, while extreme, were a desperate attempt to bring justice to a system gone awry. Director Okamoto sighed heavily, his voice tinged with a mix of remorse and determination. We cannot ignore the truth any longer. Lady Nagan's actions, though extreme, were rooted in a desire to protect the integrity of heroism. We have failed in our duty to recognize the signs of corruption. Dr. Yamada stepped forward, his expression filled with resolve. Director, what shall we do now? How can we address this situation and move forward? Director Okamoto straightened his posture, his voice steady. First and foremost, we need to acknowledge our mistakes and rectify them. We will publicly expose the truth about the former chairmans and apologize to the public for our failure to prevent it. We must regain their trust. Dr. Yamada nodded in agreement. Additionally, we should extend an olive branch to Lady Nagant. She, too, has suffered under the chairman's regime. We must offer her understanding and a chance to work towards a better future. Director Okamoto's gaze turned towards the monitors displaying Hit's mission in progress. And Hit, we must commend him for his role in uncovering the truth and navigating this delicate situation. His actions have brought us closer to the path of justice. As the Hero Public Safety Commission resolved to face the consequences of their past mistakes and strive for a brighter future, the weight of accountability rested upon their shoulders. They were prepared to make amends and work towards a system of heroism that would restore faith and uphold the principles they were entrusted to protect. It was moving toward Lady Nagant's location within a few moments. The sudden arrival of an unknown person makes Lady Nagant move to a higher ground level for her to gain an advantage. Lady Nagant finds herself on a rooftop surveying the battlefield with her sniper rifle in hand. She knows that engaging an unknown enemy without knowing their quirk would be suicide, especially in close combat would be risky, so she plans to keep her distance and rely on her marksmanship skills. She focuses on aiming at Hit, calculating the trajectory and speed needed to land a shot. Meanwhile, Hit stands calmly in the middle of the battlefield, analyzing his opponent. He's aware of Lady Nagan's reputation as a sniper and knows that he needs to close the gap quickly to neutralize her advantage. With a confident smirk, he prepares himself for the upcoming battle. Lady Nagan takes a deep breath, steadying her aim. She pulls the trigger, launching a bullet towards Hit. However, before the bullet reaches him, 
it activates his time stop ability, freezing the world around him. He calmly sidesteps the bullet, observing Lady Nagan's strategy. As time resumes, Lady Nagan adjusts her plan. She noticed that her bullets seemingly missed. Adapting to the situation, we assume Hit has a speed quirk, but wonders why doesn't he just run and grab her. She decides to use her quirk creatively, curving her bullets mid-air to catch Hit off guard. She anticipates his movements, aiming for where he will be when time starts moving again. It continues to dodge Lady Nagan's shots effortlessly, impressed by her adaptability. He studies her patterns, analyzing her timing and bullet trajectories. He strategizes his approach, planning to exploit the moment when her quirk is on cooldown or when she's vulnerable while reloading. Lady Nagant, realizing that her conventional tactics are not working, decides to create distractions. She uses her quirk to fire bullets at different angles, causing explosions and creating smoke screens. Her goal is to disrupt Hit's vision and force him to reveal his location. Hit remains calm, his senses sharp. He activates his time skip ability, momentarily accelerating his speed. In a blur of motion, he closes the distance between them, launching a flurry of precise strikes at Lady Nagant. She attempts to dodge and counter, but Hit's speed and precision make it challenging for her to land a hit. Lady Nagant, struggling to keep up, uses her mobility to retreat to a safer distance. She takes a moment to analyze Hit's movements. With the plan in mind, Lady Nagan switches her strategy. She fires a bullet towards Hit but intentionally misses, curving it to hit a nearby structure. The ricocheting bullet creates a chaotic path of deflections and unpredictable angles, forcing Hit to continuously readjust his movements. Hit, momentarily caught off guard by the unpredictable ricochets, finds himself slightly off balance. Lady Nagan seizes this opportunity launching a carefully aimed shot toward his vulnerable moment. Her bullet grazes Hit's arm, causing him to wince in pain. The tide of the battle shifts as Lady Nagant gains confidence. She continues to exploit Hit's momentary vulnerabilities, utilizing her quirk to curve bullets and keep him on his toes. She maintains her distance, ensuring that Hit cannot get too close. However, Hit determined not to be outdone, analyzes Lady Nagant's patterns, and counters her attacks with calculated precision. He adapts his movements, timing his evasions and strikes to minimize her chances of landing a hit. The battle rages on, a clash of wits, skills, and strategies. Lady Nagant uses her marksmanship and quirk creatively, while Hit showcases his mastery of time manipulation and combat expertise. Both fighters push their limits, their thoughts focused on anticipating and countering the other's moves. However, as time goes on, Lady Nagan slowly gets overwhelmed by Hit's power and falls to the ground on her knees. Witnessing the battle in the HPSC facility monitoring room, everyone was shocked by this battle. A tension in the air crackled as Hit Izuku's alternate persona faced off against Lady Nagant in a desolate urban landscape. His piercing gaze locked onto her, analyzing every movement and calculating his next move. Lady Nagant's eyes widened in disbelief as she took in the sight of a ten-year-old boy standing before her, ready for battle. Confusion mixed with a hint of amusement crossed her face. The Hero Public Safety Commission sends a child to apprehend me. How amusing. Have they run out of capable heroes? Its voice was calm and measured as he responded, his words carrying an air of confidence. I am hit, and I've been given the authority to handle this situation. I offer you a chance to work with me rather than against me, Lady Nagant. Together, we can shape a world where justice prevails without unnecessary sacrifices. A mix of surprise and intrigue flickered across Lady Nagant's face. Work with you. And what would that entail, it? I have my principles, and I won't compromise them easily. Its eyes narrowed as he considered his approach. He knew that appealing to her sense of justice was crucial. I understand your principles, Lady Nagant. I acknowledge that the chairman had become corrupted, and your actions were a response to his betrayal. The Hero Public Safety Commission now understands the truth and has given me the authority to handle this situation in my own way. They are open to change, to a new era of heroism. Lady Megan's expression shifted, a glimmer of hope mingling with her skepticism. And what is this new era you speak of it? How can we ensure justice without compromising our ideals? It stepped forward, his voice steady. Together, 
We can create a system where you no longer have to be a lone assassin. We will target only the leaders of villainous organizations, sparing innocent lives. You can be the symbol of true heroism, unburdened by the shadows of your past. Lady Nagin pondered his words, her eyes searching his face for sincerity. Slowly, she nodded, a newfound determination filling her gaze. Very well, Hit, I'll accept your offer. But know this, I will not tolerate any betrayal or deviation from our agreement. It extended a hand towards her, a sign of trust. Agreed, Lady Nagant. From this day forward, we will work together to bring true justice to the world. As their alliance formed, the Hero Public Safety Commission watched the events unfold with a mix of relief and awe. The members marveled at Hit's ability to negotiate a peaceful resolution with such a formidable adversary. In Komiteria, Izuka's mother stood among them, her emotions overwhelming. Tears streamed down her face as she witnessed her son's incredible triumph. Pride swelled within her, accompanied by a profound sense of relief. Her voice quivered with emotion as she turned to Dr. Yamada. He did it, my Izuku, he truly became a hero today. Dr. Yamada nodded his voice filled with admiration. Indeed, Midori-san. He has surpassed all expectations. Izuku, or rather, Hit, has shown us what it means to be a hero, even in the face of darkness. And so, a new era began, where Hit and Lady Nagant worked together to reshape the world of heroism. Their alliance, born from mutual understanding and a shared desire for justice, brought hope to a society plagued by corruption. Izuku Midoriya, once a boy without a quirk, had now become an agent of change, forging a path toward a brighter future. Flash back over, back to the present. A lot did happen that day, but that's all behind me now, and many things will continue to change. Though Izuku. Moving on, the next ten months will be spent on Izuku doing nothing but training and performing his assassin duties for the HPSC. Ten months of training, month one to two. Izuku begins his training by focusing on building a strong physical foundation despite his quirkless status. He dedicates himself to rigorous physical workouts, including running, strength training, and agility exercises. His goal is to enhance his speed, strength, and endurance. He also studies hero techniques and strategies, learning from past battles and analyzing ways to maximize his abilities. Izuku's Thoughts I am determined to overcome my quirkless status by harnessing my powers from my previous life, as well as push myself to the limit, envisioning how my abilities will aid me in the UA entrance exam. Month 3-5 to five. With his physical fitness improved, Izuku begins to tap into his powers and abilities. He focuses on mastering his time manipulation abilities, honing his control over time skipping and precise movement. He practices freezing and manipulating time in short bursts, aiming to optimize his reflexes and reaction time. Additionally, he studies various martial arts techniques to integrate them seamlessly with his time manipulation abilities, creating a unique combat style. Izuka's thoughts. I realize that the mastery of my time manipulation powers will be crucial in the UA entrance exam. I'm immersed in understanding the nuances of manipulating time, visualizing myself flawlessly freezing and manipulating time to gain an advantage over opponents. Month 6-8 During this phase, Izuka focuses on mental training to optimize his decision-making abilities. He practices rapid assessment of situations, analyzing opponent's strengths and weaknesses, and devising strategies accordingly. He engages in simulated battles against multiple opponents, using his time-skipping ability to predict and counter their attacks. Additionally, he studies hero history and famous battles, expanding his knowledge of heroics and drawing inspiration for his own strategies. Izuka's Thoughts I understand the importance of quick thinking and adaptability in the UA entrance exam. I envision myself making split-second decisions, exploiting opponents' vulnerabilities, and emerging victorious through strategic planning and execution. Month 9-10 to 10. In the final months leading up to the exam, Izuka integrates all aspects of his training. He combines his physical conditioning, time manipulation abilities, and strategic thinking to engage in practical exercises. He participates in mock exams and battles against fellow aspiring heroes, utilizing his powers and abilities to their fullest potential. He analyzes his performance, identifies areas for improvement, and adapts his techniques accordingly. 
Izuka's thoughts. As the UA entrance exam approaches, I'm experiencing a mix of excitement and determination. I know since I was reincarnated, I still possess immense potential and visualize myself excelling in the exam using my unique blend of physical prowess, time manipulation, and strategic thinking to overcome any challenge and prove my worth as a hero. And thus, ten months have gone by, and it is now time for the UA entrance exam. Day before the UA entrance exam. Izuka spent the day before the UA entrance exams in the warm embrace of his mother, Inko. They decided to spend the day together, creating cherished memories and enjoying each other's company. Inko couldn't help but feel overwhelming pride for her son, seeing how far he had come in life, despite not having a quirk like everyone else. She admired his unwavering determination and the way he never let his limitations define him. As they sat together, Enko expressed her deep admiration for Izuku. She acknowledged the darkness and cruelty that his path as an assassin entailed, but understood the noble purpose behind his actions. She saw that he only took lives to protect innocent people and ensure that hope in the hero society they both believed and remained intact. Enko's love for her son was boundless, and she cherished the moments they shared, knowing the challenges they both faced. In their conversation, they reflected on how their lives had unfolded. Izuku shared his gratitude for having Enko as his mother, even though he carried the memories and feelings of both Izuku and Hit within him. Despite the complexity of his existence, he expressed his love for Enko, appreciating her support and understanding. Both of them looked forward to the future, embracing the uncertainty with a sense of hope and determination. They knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, they had each other's unwavering support and love to rely on. The Way Entrance Exam On the day of the UA entrance exam, Izuka made his way towards the UA gate, his heart pounding with excitement and admiration at looking at the UA entrance. As he approached, he unexpectedly found himself face to face with his former friend, Kitsuki Bakugu. The air grew tense, memories of their complicated past flashing through Izuka's mind, but that didn't stop his resolve to move forward. Itsuki glared at Izuku, a mixture of surprise and anger evident in his eyes. Well, well, if it isn't the useless Deku. What are you doing here? Trying to make a fool of yourself again? Izuku's expression remained calm but determined, his voice steady as he replied, Bakugu, it's been a long time. Bakugu scoffed, his tone filled with arrogance. That's all you have to say. Don't make me laugh. You're still as quirkless as ever. You don't belong here, Deku. You never did. Izuka's eyes met Bakugu's, a resolute determination shining through. You may think my lack of a quirk is a weakness, but I've embraced the power I possess now. I have the strength and skills to succeed, just in a different way. I'm not here to compete with you, Bakugu. I'm here to become the hero I've always aspired to be. Bakugu's expression twisted, a mix of frustration and disbelief. You really think you can surpass me? That's ridiculous. I'll show you once and for all who's better. Izuka's gaze softened, his words sincere. Bakugu, this isn't about being better than each other. It's about fulfilling our own potential and protecting those in need. I hope one day we can understand and support each other's journeys. Akugu's anger seemed to waver for a moment, a hint of uncertainty creeping into his eyes. Don't think I'll go easy on you, Deku. But if you think you can prove yourself well, I guess I'll have to see it for myself. As the two former friends parted ways, a mixture of tension and a sliver of hope hung in the air. Izuku understood that his path would not be an easy one. Yet, he remained resolute, knowing that the UA entrance exam would be the first step towards realizing his dreams and beginning his job for the Hero Public Safety Commission. UA Exam Room During the UA entrance exam, Present Mick was in the middle of explaining the one, two, and three-pointer robots, and just before he was about to explain the zero-point robots to the gathered students, when a boy with bluish-black hair wearing glasses called Tenya Ida abruptly interrupted him. The room fell into a momentary silence as all eyes turned towards Tenya, including Izuku, who sat with his eyes closed, seemingly in deep concentration. Enya's voice cut through the hush as he addressed Izuku directly. If you're not going to take this exam seriously, then perhaps you should leave. We are all here to prove ourselves, and your lack of focus is disrespectful. Izuka remained seated, his eyes still closed, 
but a small smile played on his lips. Was it? Just because my eyes are closed doesn't mean I'm not listening. You interrupted present Mike before he had a chance to finish explaining, didn't you? Tenya's brows furrowed in surprise at Izuka Hit's calm response. Well, yes, but interrupting Tenya, Izuka continued, his voice unwavering. The zero-pointer robot, as the name suggests, is worth zero points. It's an obstacle to be avoided. You should be cautious, but it's not worth wasting your time and energy on. Isn't that right, present Mick? Present Mick, slightly taken aback by the interruption, nodded with a slight grin. You got it, young listener. The zero-pointer may look intimidating, but remember, it won't contribute to your score. Then you paused, seemingly considering Izuka's words. The room was filled with murmurs as other students started to realize the truth in Izuka hit statement. Tenya's expression softened, and he took a step back. I apologize for the interruption, Izuku. It seems I jumped to conclusions. Let us all continue with the exam. Izuku opened his eyes, a gleam of determination shining within them. Of course, Tenya. We're all here to give it our best. Attention diffused, and the room returned to the excitement and anticipation that had filled it before. Izuku's words had not only diffused the situation, but it also gained him respect from his fellow students. As the exam commenced, Izuku remained focused, ready to face the challenges ahead, proving that he was more than just his closed eyes. As Izuku finished the written exam, he double-checked his answers and felt confident in his performance. He walked up to present Mike, handing over his exam with a small smile. Here you go, present Mike, Izuka said. I've finished the exam. Present Mike glanced at the clock and raised an eyebrow in surprise. Already? Did you finish in just half an hour? Are you sure you don't want to look over your work? Make sure you haven't missed anything. Izuka nodded, his voice filled with assurance. I appreciate your concern, present Mick, but I'm confident in my answers. I've put a lot of effort into preparing for this exam, and I trust my knowledge and instincts. Present Mick chuckled, impressed by Izuka's confidence. Well, you certainly know how to trust yourself, Midoriya. That's a valuable quality for a hero. All right then, I'll take your exam. Just hang tight until the exam concludes. With that, Izuka found a quiet corner of the exam room. He closed his eyes, focusing on his breathing, and began to enter a meditative state. Deep within himself, he tapped into his inner reservoir of chi, harnessing his energy and aligning his mind and body. As time ticked away, Izuku remained still, his focus unwavering. He visualized the upcoming practical exam, the robots he would face, and the strategies he had devised. With each breath, he cultivated a sense of calm and determination, readying himself for the challenges that awaited him. Present Mick, observing Izuku's serene demeanor, approached him with curiosity. Young listener, what are you doing? The practical exam will begin soon. Izuku opened his eyes, a determined spark shining within them. I'm channeling my Kai, present Mike. It helps me find balance and clarity. I want to be fully prepared for the practical exam. What is Kai? Asked present Mike, confused. Izuku began to explain what Kai is and how it works. Kai is also known as latent energy or fighting power, which directly translates as life force. This force is a tangible energy inside every living being with its major focus being in the center of the body. By drawing it out, an individual is able to manipulate it and use it outside the body. Present Mick was shocked about what he was just told, but he thought that Izuku was referring to his quirk's abilities, so he paid it no mind. Present Mick nodded newfound respect evident in his expression. You've got quite the focus, Midoriya. Keep it up. I have a feeling you'll leave a lasting impression during the practical exam. As the remaining exam time dwindled, Izuku continued to gather his energy and maintain his meditative state. He knew that his preparation and focus would be crucial for the challenges that lay ahead. With his mind sharpened and his chi flowing, Izuku was ready to face the practical exam head-on and showcase his potential as a hero. In the final ten minutes before the practical exam, Izuka concluded his meditation and ceased gathering his chi. He calmly made his way toward the designated exam area, determined and focused. As he walked, he changed into his chosen attire a black long-sleeved sports shirt and black sports pants, 
ensuring maximum flexibility and comfort for the upcoming challenges. As Izuku arrived at his assigned area, he couldn't help but notice the curious gazes of the girls nearby. Their eyes were drawn to his toned physique, accentuated by the fitted sportswear. While he acknowledged their attention, his mind remained fixed on the task at hand. Standing in the center of the exam area, Izuku felt a surge of adrenaline. He surveyed his surroundings, observing the robot's position for the exam. His determination intensified, knowing that this was the moment to showcase his abilities. Inner dialogue echoed in Izuku's mind. This is it, Izuku. Your chance to prove yourself. All the training and all the preparations have led up to this moment. Show them what you're capable of. Remember your strengths, your techniques, and trust in yourself. As the final seconds ticked away, Izuku's anticipation grew. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for what lay ahead. His mind was clear, his body primed, and his spirit unwavering. He was ready to face the practical exam head-on, to adapt, strategize, and demonstrate his skills as the reincarnation of Hit. However, he sometimes forgets that he is talking to himself in the third person when he is in fact both Izuka Midoriya and the legendary assassin Hit. With an air of confidence, Izuka's focus remained unyielding. He knew that success in the exam would not come without challenges, but he embraced them eagerly. The time had come to unleash his full potential and seize the opportunity to prove that he was capable of standing among the aspiring heroes of UA. As the applicants prepared for the practical part of the UA exam, a mix of excitement and nerves filled the air. Izuka stood among them, his demeanor composed and confident. Sensing the tension, he spoke up, his voice carrying a calming tone yet brimming with assurance. Everyone, there's no need to fear. Fear itself can hold us back from achieving our true potential. Instead, let us focus on what we want to achieve, on the goals we've set for ourselves. Embrace this challenge and let your determination guide you. His words resonated with the other applicants, their expressions transforming from apprehension to a renewed sense of purpose. Izuka's words offered a gentle reminder that success required a positive mindset and a clear vision of what they wished to accomplish. The UA monitor room, the UA teachers, including Octoplasm, Cementus, Power Loader, 13, Snipe, Vlad King, Shodozawa, Eraserhead, Present Mike, Midnight, All Might, and Principal Nizu watched the scene unfold from the monitor room. They were impressed by the impact Izuku had on the applicants and his ability to inspire and uplift them. Ectoplasm observed with intrigue, this young man has an extraordinary presence. He possesses the ability to instill courage and determination in his peers even before the exam has begun. Cementus nodded in agreement. Indeed, he understands the power of words and motivation. It's commendable to see such leadership qualities in someone so young. Our loader chimed in, he has a natural talent for guiding others toward their true potential. I'm curious to see how his own abilities will fare in the practical exam. The teachers were captivated by the impact Izuka had on the applicants. They recognized the profound effect his words had, fostering a sense of unity and purpose among the young heroes in training. Back to the exam area. With the practical exam about to commence, the applicants stood tall, and their earlier anxieties transformed into a shared determination. They were ready to confront the one, two, three, and zero-point robots, each harboring their own aspirations and dreams of becoming heroes. At that moment, Izuka's words had sown the seeds of hope and courage, setting the stage for an extraordinary display of resilience and growth. As the exam began, they would face the challenges ahead with newfound strength, fully embracing the opportunity to prove themselves and soar to new heights under the watchful guidance of the UA teachers. As the time for the practical exam approached, anticipation filled the air. The applicants stood at the ready, preparing for the familiar countdown that would signal the start. However, before the expected countdown could be heard, a blur of motion caught everyone by surprise. Izuku had already taken off, speed blitzing past the startled candidates. One of the applicants called out, expressing concern. Wait, we should wait for the countdown. If you start early, you'll be disqualified. Suddenly, present mixed booming voice echoed through the exam grounds, capturing everyone's attention. What are you waiting for? Follow that guy's lead. In a real fight, there are no countdowns. If you don't hurry up, that guy will end up with all the exam points. His words sparked a mix of excitement 
and determination among the applicants. The realization that this was a real-life test, where quick thinking and initiative were paramount, electrified the atmosphere. The candidates hesitated no longer, racing after Izuku, their competitive spirits ignited. In the midst of the commotion, thoughts raced through the applicants' minds. Some were filled with adrenaline-fueled enthusiasm, eager to prove their mettle and claim their own share of exam points. Others felt a sense of urgency, not wanting to be left behind, driven by the desire to showcase their abilities. Izuku, feeling the rush of wind against his face, maintained his focus. He understood that this practical exam demanded his utmost speed, agility, and strategic thinking. Every move he made was calculated, his instincts honed by the experiences of his previous life as hit. Though he moved swiftly, he remained mindful of his surroundings, ready to adapt to any obstacle or opponent that crossed his path. As the candidates pursued Izuku, their determination grew stronger with each step. They realized that success would not be handed to them. They had to seize the opportunity and prove their worth. The practical exam had transformed into a fierce race, where every second counted. At that intense moment, the UA practical exam took on a new dimension. The absence of a countdown had stripped away any hesitation, forcing the applicants to trust their instincts and make split-second decisions. They pushed their limits, vying to make their mark and secure their place among the aspiring heroes. With present mixed voice still ringing in their ears, the candidates poured all their efforts into the pursuit, ready to face any challenge that awaited them on the path to becoming true heroes. Within the first minute of the practical exam, Izuku astonished everyone as he swiftly accumulated 30 points. The other applicants watched in awe, marveling at his exceptional abilities. Whispers spread through the crowd as they speculated about the nature of his quirk. Meanwhile, in the monitor room, the UA teachers couldn't help but express their curiosity. Nizu, the principal, was requested to pull up Izuku's file to uncover the truth. As the information appeared on the screen, the teachers were taken aback. Izuku was listed as quirkless, leaving them perplexed and eager to understand how he exhibited such remarkable skills. Octoplasm, observing the monitor, voiced his astonishment. Incredible. How is he doing all of this without a quirk? His speed, strength, and precision are extraordinary. Cementus chimed in, his expression a mix of intrigue and admiration. And his control. He's attacking with pinpoint accuracy, avoiding collateral damage. It's as if he possesses years of training and experience. Thirteen, her eyes fixed on the screen, added her thoughts. His movements are so fluid and graceful. It's clear that every action is intentional, executed with the utmost precision. As the exam continued, Izuku demonstrated not only his formidable fighting skills, but also his discernment in aiding his fellow applicants. He strategically offered assistance when he deemed it necessary, recognizing their capabilities and assessing the situation accurately. Our loader watched in awe, his voice filled with wonder. Look at how he assesses the situation and provides support to others. It's like he has an innate sense of when to step in and lend a hand. Vlad King, his eyes fixed on Azuka's display, nodded in approval. He's truly a remarkable individual. It's rare to witness such control and power, especially from someone without a quirk. As the practical exam progressed, the teachers remained captivated by Azuka's exceptional skills and his ability to surpass the expectations placed upon him. They marveled at his precise control, his unwavering focus, and his innate understanding of heroism. In the midst of the excitement, Izuku remained driven, drawing upon the vast experience and wisdom inherited from his previous life as hit. Though he lacked a quirk, he had honed his abilities to an extraordinary level, utilizing his superhuman speed, strength, agility, and energy blasts with remarkable precision. As whispers and questions continued to circulate, Izuku pressed on, displaying his unwavering dedication to the path of heroism. He fought with a sense of purpose and a commitment to protect exemplifying the qualities that made him stand out among the aspiring heroes of UA. Other Exam Grounds In various sections of the UA practical exam grounds, the other applicants showcased their impressive abilities, adding to the excitement and intensity of the event. Among them, an ash-blonde individual with explosive power exhibited exceptional combat skills, their prowess evident as they unleashed their quirk. Another participant, a girl with blush marks on her cheeks, 
utilized her zero-gravity quirk to effortlessly hurl robots from the sky. Meanwhile, Tenya Yida, known for his interruption during the written exam, showcased his remarkable speed quirk, utilizing the engines in his calves to dart across the battlefield with agility and precision. These remarkable displays of power and skill caught the attention of the UA teachers. Watching the candidates in action, the teachers exchanged comments and observations. Ectoplasm, his eyes scanning the monitors, remarked, We have a good number of talented first years this time around. Their abilities are quite impressive. Cementus nodded in agreement, a faint smile gracing his lips. Indeed, the potential of this new generation is promising. It will be interesting to see what else they have in store for us this semester. 13. Observing the applicants with a keen eye, joined in the conversation. These individuals are already demonstrating remarkable control and understanding of their quirks. I anticipate great things from them. Shodozawa, also known as Eraserhead, couldn't help but express his mild annoyance amidst the excitement. We have quite a diverse group this year. I just hope they don't give me too much trouble during the semester. As the practical exam continued, the grounds were filled with the sounds of battling robots and the determined shouts of the participants. The combined efforts and impressive skills of the applicants showcased the immense potential within UA's student body. Amidst the fierce competition, a sense of camaraderie began to emerge. The applicants admired one another's talents and pushed themselves to new heights. The practical exam served not only as a demonstration of individual prowess, but also as a testament to the collective strength and unity among the aspiring heroes. The teachers closely monitored the participants, eagerly anticipating the developments that would unfold during the semester. They recognized the incredible abilities and determination displayed by the first-year students, foreseeing a promising future for heroics at UA. Back with Izuku. The UA entrance exam battleground was filled with chaos as Izuku Midoriya, brimming with newfound confidence, darted through the throngs of one, two, and three-pointer robots. With each movement, he showcased his remarkable speed and strength, leaving a trail of stunned onlookers in his wake. Izuku's muscles rippled as he effortlessly evaded the robotic assailants. His reflexes honed to perfection, he weaved through their attacks with uncanny precision. With a burst of power, he delivered devastating blows, sending robots flying in every direction. As Izuku continued his relentless assault, he unleashed his Kai blasts, forming them with a mastery that belied his age. The explosive energy tore through the robotic adversaries, reducing them to twisted metal and sparking circuits. But Izuka's heroism didn't end there. Amidst the chaos, he found himself aiding other UA applicants who struggled against the onslaught of robots. He zipped through the battlefield, providing support and encouragement to those in need. He extended a hand to a fellow applicant cornered by a group of two pointers swiftly dispatching the assailants with a flurry of punches and kicks. With his guidance and assistance, they were able to regroup and continue the fight. Izuku's presence alone became a beacon of hope for the aspiring heroes. His unwavering determination and unwavering belief in the potential of others inspired those around him to push beyond their limits. Throughout the battle, onlookers marveled at Izuku's extraordinary display of power, agility, and leadership. Whispers of his prowess spread like wildfire, earning him respect and admiration from both peers and instructors. Within the first ten minutes of the practical exam, Izuku amassed an impressive total of 150 points. He seamlessly maneuvered through all the robots, aiding his fellow UA applicants while ensuring the integrity of the simulated city remained intact. Unbeknownst to anyone, Izuku utilized his time-skip technique, reducing his reaction time by more than half and maximizing his abilities to their fullest potential. However, the remarkable display of his skills and the quirkless designation in Izuku's file raised concerns in the mind of All Might. A nagging thought surfaced, was there a possibility that this remarkable student was somehow connected to All for One? Could this kid be a descendant, or even someone who had made a deal with a notorious villain to possess multiple quirks? If true, it would imply that All for One might still be alive. All Might shares his suspicions with Principal Nizu who agreed to address the matter and have a conversation with Izuku upon his entry to UA as a first-year student. As Izuku felt satisfied with his accumulated points, he used the remaining time to observe the others, ready to assist wherever his help was needed. Even if the exam is two hours long, he didn't need much time to pass at all. 
As the exam progressed, Principal Niza decided it was time to introduce the zero-point robots into the exam grounds. With a push of a red button, Power Loader activated the zero-pointers, challenging the applicants to demonstrate their true character in the face of fear and stress. As the zero-pointers began their menacing advance, panic gripped the remaining participants, causing them to scatter in fear. However, Izuku remained calm, his expression unwavering. His gaze caught sight of a girl with brown hair and blushed cheeks trapped amidst the rubble, right where the zero pointers were approaching. Swiftly, Izuki used his kite to leap toward the girl, offering his assistance. Are you okay? What's your name? He asked. She replied, Ichako Yuraka. Izuku assured her that he would save her, and in an instant, they seemingly teleported away from the imminent danger of the zero pointers. He entrusted Tenya Ida who happened to be nearby, was watching over Ichako, to which Tenya responded with a determined look and a resolute affirmation. As Izuku reappeared in front of the advancing zero-pointers, his determination burning bright, he unleashed a super-concentrated Kai blast, obliterating the robots into debris with incredible precision. The display of his power left everyone in awe, their faces filled with astonishment and curiosity about the mysterious individual and his extraordinary strength. Thanks to that, Izuku earned another 50 points gathering 200 points total. In that pivotal moment, the truth of Izuku's abilities began to unfold, leaving both the UA teachers and the applicants captivated by the unparalleled potential he possessed. The questions and wonderings lingered in the minds of everyone present, eager to learn more about this enigmatic newcomer and the depths of his strength. Thus, the end of the exam came and everyone was told to go to Recovery Girl to heal up or may change clothes to go home and wait for the results to be calculated. Later in the day, Izuku, dressed in his middle school uniform, returned home with a mixture of excitement and confidence bubbling within him. He found his mother, Inko Midoriya, in the living room, anxiously awaiting his arrival. As he entered, his face lit up with a wide grin. Mom, guess what? I made it. I passed the UA entrance exams, Izuku exclaimed, with a smile containing his enthusiasm. Inko's eyes widened with joy and pride, her voice trembling with excitement. Izuku, that's incredible. I knew you could do it. Tell me everything. How did it go? Izuku's excitement overflowed as he recounted the events of the entrance exams, from the written test to the practical examination. He described how he faced the zero-point robots, and, in the final moments, unleashed his incredible power, reducing them to mere debris. And then, Mom, I used my abilities to completely destroy the zero-point robots. They couldn't even stand a chance against me, Izuku exclaimed, his voice brimming with confidence and pride. Inko's eyes widened in astonishment, pride washing over her. She could hardly believe the tremendous growth her son had achieved. Izuku, you've become so strong. I'm amazed and proud of how far you've come. But the sparkle in his eyes, Izuka continued, his voice filled with conviction. And that's not all, Mom. I contacted the Hero Public Safety Commission to inform them about my performance. They were impressed, and I assured them that I am guaranteed a place at UA High School without any problems. Inko's face glowed with a mixture of joy and relief. Izuku, my dear, this is wonderful news. I'm so proud of you. Your determination and hard work have paid off. As Izuku's achievements sank in, Enko couldn't help but feel a surge of gratitude and pride for her son. She embraced him tightly, tears of happiness streaming down her face. You've become an incredible young man, Izuku. Your dreams are within reach, and I will always be here to support you, Enko whispered, her voice filled with love and admiration. Well, I do still have my job as an assassin and have been basically doing my own brand of hero work for a while now. But thank you for all your support, Mom, Izuka said with a small smile on his face. Inko just laughs a little because of his humor. With his acceptance into UA High School secured and the unwavering support of his mother, Izuka's journey as a hero continues. The Hero Public Safety Commission recognized his potential and the world eagerly awaited the emergence of a new symbol of hope and inspiration. Izuka Midoriya, armed with his powers and unwavering determination, was ready to embark on a path that would shape the future of heroism. Early Morning As the morning sun began to peek over the horizon, casting its gentle rays through the curtains, Izuka Midoriya, 
also known as Hit, stirred in his bed. The alarm clock read 3.30 a.m., signaling the start of another rigorous day. With a determined resolve, Hit swung his legs off the side of the bed, ready to face the challenges ahead. The room was bathed in a soft glow as Hit began his morning exercises. Push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and side-to-side -side crunches, each repetition pushing his body to its limits. The rhythmic thud of his movements filled the room, echoing his unwavering determination. Next came the weight lifting, bench presses, and deadlifts, the clinking of metal plates mingling with the sound of Hit's steady breathing. He pushed his muscles to their thresholds, honing his physical prowess. In the spacious gym provided by the Hero Public Safety Commission, Hit laced up his running shoes. He set off with disciplined strides, his feet pounding against the treadmill, each step a testament to his unwavering dedication. The minutes ticked by as he tested the limits of his endurance, pushing himself to achieve greater speeds. Stepping into the pristine pool, Hit immersed himself in the cool water. Stroke by stroke, he propelled himself forward, the rhythmic splash soothing his mind as he embraced the meditative rhythm of swimming. With each lap, his muscles worked in perfect harmony, further refining his physique. Exiting the pool, Hit's gaze turned to the open skies above. He harnessed his kai and activated his ability to fly, his body enveloped in an aura of kai. Ascending into the air, he soared with grace and precision, executing intricate flight patterns. Each twist and turn was calculated, his mind working in perfect synchrony with his ever-evolving powers. With the clock ticking closer to 6.30 a.m., Hid wrapped up his morning routine and headed towards the showers. Ten minutes later, he emerged, his body refreshed and invigorated. Not a trace of sweat remained as he dressed swiftly, a testament to his meticulous nature. Entering the kitchen, Izuku was greeted by the aroma of pancakes and sizzling bacon. His mother, Inko, beamed with pride as she set the table. The sound of their conversation filled the air as they shared their morning meal, laughter and love weaving through their every word. Inko's eyes glistened with a mixture of pride and bittersweet emotions. My dear Izuku, you've come so far. I'm proud of you for making it into UA and achieving the highest score. All Might himself would be impressed. Izuku's smile radiated warmth as he embraced his mother. Thank you, Mom. Your unwavering support has been the driving force behind my journey. I love you, and I promise to make you proud. After bidding Enko farewell, Izuka stepped into the waiting limo, a symbol of his new path. The vehicle glided through the waking city, carrying him toward Yue High School. Within the limo, a video phone message awaited him, reminding him of his mission at Yue to keep a watchful eye on All Might and act as a bodyguard for Momo Yuerazu. Izuku's mind buzzed with anticipation and curiosity as he pondered the significance of his role. He knew that Yue held countless challenges and opportunities, and he was ready to face them head on. As the limo approached the gates of Yue High School, Izuku's resolve solidified. The weight of his responsibility sat firmly upon his shoulders, but he felt ready. With unwavering determination and the support of the Hero Public Safety Commission, Izuka stepped out of the vehicle and onto the path that would lead him toward a destiny he was determined to shape. At Yue High School, as the clock struck 7.30 a.m., Izuka made his way through the bustling halls of Yue High School towards Class 1A. The distant sound of yelling reached his ears, and he recognized it as Bakugu's explosive temper. Approaching the oversized classroom door, Izuka prepared himself for what lay beyond. Pushing the door open, Izuka was met with a scene of chaos. Bakuda's voice reverberated through the room, his anger echoing against the walls. Izuku observed his classmates, some seemingly unfazed by the commotion, while others exchanged worried glances. Amidst the noise, Izuku's gaze landed on a curled up in a sleeping bag near the back of the instructor's desk. It was none other than the underground hero, Eraserhead, the enigmatic teacher known for his disheveled appearance and no-nonsense attitude. Izuku marveled at how effortlessly Mr. Ozawa blended into the chaos, his presence seemingly unnoticed by the rest of the class. Izuku's mind raced as he considered the situation. Rather than adding to the cacophony, he chose to observe silently, recognizing that speaking up would only escalate the tension. He understood the value of timing and strategic action. As his eyes met Mr. Ozawa's, a flicker of surprise crossed the teacher's face. 
He watched as Azuka seamlessly integrated himself into the classroom dynamic, his silent observations standing out amidst the chaos. Impressed by Azuka's composure and perceptiveness, Mr. Ozawa nodded approvingly. The atmosphere in Class 1 was tense as Katsuki Bakugu stormed the classroom after his heated argument with Tenyatita. His anger was palpable, and everyone could feel the tension in the air. As Bakugu's gaze scanned the room, his eyes landed on Izuku, who had been sitting quietly at his desk since arriving and avoiding Bakugu's argument with Ida. The sight of his former childhood friend only fueled Bakugu's resentment. What the hell are you doing here, Deku? Bakugu sneered, his voice dripping with contempt. Izuka looked up calmly, meeting Bakugu's intense gaze. I'm here because I earned my place at Yue, just like everyone else, he replied firmly. Bakugu's fists clenched, his anger bubbling to the surface. Yeah, right. Like I'm supposed to believe that you, a corkless loser, somehow managed to get into this school, he spat, his tone mocking. That's enough, Bakugu. Tenyatita interjected, standing up for Izuku. We all passed the entrance exam fair and square. There's no need for baseless accusations. The rest of the class watched the confrontation unfold, divided in their opinions. Some sympathized with Izuka hit, while others remained wary due to his exceptional performance during the tests. Izuku, undeterred by Bakugu's hostility, remained composed. I worked hard and gave it my all. Accusing me of cheating is unfair and not what a true hero would do, he stated firmly. Bakugu's face twisted with rage. Who cares about you wanting to be a hero? I'm gonna be the best hero, and you're just in my way, he bellowed, lunging at Izuku. With an agility that surprised the class, Izuku dodged Bakugu's attack effortlessly, his movements fluid and precise. The other students gasped in astonishment at his speed and skill. Dude, did you see that? He dodged that guy's attack like it was nothing. A boy with a lighting blot in his blonde hair known as Denki Kaminari exclaimed in disbelief. Momo Jairozu watched the scene unfold with a mix of concern and curiosity. He's definitely not just a regular student. There's something different about him. As the tension in the room mounted, the rest of the class remained unaware of Mr. Ozawa's presence until he chose to reveal himself. With a swift motion, he emerged from his sleeping bag, capturing the attention of the unruly students. The room fell silent as Mr. Ozawa's stern gaze swept over the room. Observing this interaction, Izuka felt a strong sense of respect and anticipation. He understood that Mr. Ozawa's presence commanded respect, a stark contrast to the volatile energy surrounding Bakugu. As the classroom settled down, Mr. Ozawa began to address the students, his voice firm and unwavering. Izuka listened intently, absorbing every word, aware that this was a crucial moment to understand the dynamics of his new classmates. It took you all of five minutes to shut up, quiet down, and notice me, that's no good. Although the only one that I won't be reprimanding is Midoriya because he knew that I was in the classroom the whole time and only spoke when he needed to, said Mr. Ozawa with a neutral expression. Taking out some P uniforms, Mr. Ozawa tells the class, go to the changing room and meet me outside on the field, we are going to be doing a quirk apprehension test. But sir, what about orientation? We are going to miss it if we don't show up said Ichaka Urarika with a confused expression. We only have three years to make you into decent heroes. If you want to waste time on pointless ceremonies, then you should have gone to a normal school, said Mr. Ozawa with a cold tone. Without saying a word, Izuku walks up to the front, grabs a P. E. uniform, and makes his way over to the changing room. You should follow Midoriya's lead at this rate. He will be the only student worth teaching in Class 1A stated Mr. Ozawa with a creepy smile that gave the class chills down their spines, having heard that everyone began to make their way over to change into the P.E. uniforms and catch up with Izuku. UA Changing Room As Izuku moved at a fast speed to the UA Changing Room, he quickly changes and with his observation of the room he was in, noticed a small hole in the wall leading to the girls, changing thus he takes it upon himself to seal it with a bit of his kai melting it shut, and then seemingly teleporting to the quirk field before anyone can arrive. Oh, quirk field. Making his way over to the quirk field, Mr. Ozawa is surprised that there is someone already waiting even before he does. Thought to himself, this kid is different from all the other students. He thinks before taking action, 
He doesn't speak until he decides to, and he is rather calm, too calm. I'll have to see how he reacts to what I'll say about the quirk apprehension test. Back at the UA changing room. In the UA changing room, the guys noticed that Izuka wasn't there, and they all thought it was strange because they just saw him enter but didn't see him change or leave until they made their way outside where he was waiting with Mr. Ozawa. Back with the quirk field, one by one the students showed up and this annoyed Mr. Ozawa as he exclaimed, it all of you fifteen minutes to arrive, and that's no good time is precious, and we can't have you using so much of it. Pro heroes need to be able to take action as soon as possible and with very little time. If it took almost all of you this long, then we will have a hard time teaching you anything. After listening to this one student with purple balls on his head said, Hey wait what about the guy with messy dark green curly hair he's not here? Why should you exclude him for not showing up at all? If you're referring to me I have been here right from the start. Said Izuka leaning on the wall right behind all of them with a calm cool tone in his voice. This shocked the whole class because they didn't even notice him. But Izuka simply explained that he can erase his presence by emptying his mind. Moving on, Mr. Ozawa asked Midoriya what was the fastest time on your softball throw during middle school. Izuka said, it was about 85 meters. Tossing a softball over to Izuku, Mr. Ozawa stated for him to throw the ball hard as he can, but this time use his quirk and don't leave the circle but anything goes, and since he got both the top score and the highest score in the exam, he gets to go first. This statement made, the hushed anticipation settled over the class. As Izuku stepped up to the plate, he held the softball in his hand, his dark purple kai subtly enveloping it. With a quick motion, he released the ball into the air. It soared into the sky, faster and higher than anyone could track until it disappeared from sight. The class watched in stunned silence as the softball left the atmosphere, a trail of energy left in its wake. The scoreboard blinked, unable to comprehend the distance it had reached, displaying the score as 10,000 meters. White eyes turned to Izuku, disbelief fetched on their faces. Ichaki Uraraka's jaw dropped. Did did he just? Akugu, however, was the first to react, his rage fueling his actions. Damn it, Deku. Trying to outdo me, are you? Tell me how you did that or you're dead. He ignited his explosion quirk, launching himself at Izuku. But in a split second, Izuku's eyes flashed, and his body seemed to blur. Bakugu's attack hit nothing but air, and he crashed into the ground face first, leaving a trail of debris. Mr. Ozawa, swift to respond, was there in an instant. Bakugu do something like that again and I won't hesitate to expel you from the hero course, got it? Said with a cold tone that sent him into both anger and frustration. Yes, sir, said Bakugo with rage present in his response. Just wait, Deku. I will kill you and show everyone who's the strongest in the class and become the future number one hero. Thought Bakugo. Wow, that was crazy. And we get to use our quirks as much as we want. This is going to be fun said a pink-skinned girl with horns on her head. So you think it's going to be all fun and games during your time here? Then how's this for fun? The person in last place will be expelled from the hero course and be deemed to not have any potential, said Mr. Ozawa with a cold but serious tone. Most of the class aside from Izuku, Todoroki, Yaya Rozu and Bakugo said, What but that's not fair. We all worked really hard to get here. You can't just expel us if we do badly on one test. It's not fair. How can we just be expelled from one test you give us? Mina Ashido exclaimed, her frustration evident. Antasira, a boy with a tape quirk, shook his head, disbelief in his eyes. Yeah, we're supposed to be training to become heroes, not just getting rid of people who aren't strong enough yet. Izuku's expression remained calm, but his words carried weight as he spoke up. Is it fair that villains attack without warning? Are natural disasters fair? Is it fair when innocent people die or get killed? The class fell silent, his words sinking in. Izuka continued, his voice steady and resolute. The world is filled with many things, but fairness isn't always one of them. We can't control everything that happens, but we can control how we respond and what we do to make a difference. Focus on what you can do, and keep moving forward. As his words hung in the air, the class's initial protest transformed into contemplation. They exchanged glances, their perspectives shifting as they considered Izuku's words. 
It was a reminder that the path to becoming heroes was filled with challenges and uncertainties, but their determination and actions were what truly mattered. Amid the thoughtful silence, Izuku's message resonated, a beacon of wisdom in a world that often defied fairness. The class's resolve only grew stronger, and they were reminded that their journey was about more than just competition. It was about becoming heroes who could make a meaningful impact, no matter the circumstances. The students of class one had gathered with a mix of excitement and nerves. After witnessing Izuku's power and listening to his words of wisdom, they wanted to know more about him. The air buzzed with anticipation as they prepared to showcase their abilities. As the test commenced, all eyes were on Izuku immediately caught everyone's attention. Class 1 of each had their turns for the softball throw, with Achaki Uraraka's performance being impressive, her gravity manipulation providing her with a score of infinity. The 50-meter dash kicked off the competition, and the students raced with determination. Bakugu's explosive speed left an impressive trail of sparks while Leda's Ingenium legacy propelled him forward with precision. In the 50-meter dash, Izuku's speed was unmatched. He effortlessly surged ahead, leaving a trail of dust in his wake. Whoa, did you see that? Midoriya just zoomed past like a bullet. Saw Azri exclaimed, her eyes widening in amazement. Mina Ishido chimed in, Yeah, he's like a real-life superhero. Next, the grip strength test put their physical prowess to the test. Kirishima's hardened fist gripped the device, showcasing his unyielding determination. Sato's sugar-infused strength was a force to be reckoned with, and Aijiro's agile tail displayed his precise control. As they moved on the test, Izuka effortlessly crushed the device in his hand, garnering odd gasps from his classmates. That's insane. How is he so strong? Aijiro Kirishima marveled. Bakugu. On the other hand, grew increasingly infuriated as he struggled to achieve the same level of strength. This is ridiculous. I won't be outdone by that quirkless weakling. He growled. In the standing long jump, Toru Hagakure's invisible determination launched her forward, while Suro's tape enhanced leap was met with cheers from his classmates. The standing long jump came next for Izuku's sword through the air with a grace that seemed almost unnatural. His agility and precision were unmatched leading to yet another first-place victory. His control and precision are on a whole different level, Mashiro Jiro observed in all. Fumikage Tokoemi added, Indeed, his movements are as smooth as the darkness that surrounds him. The repeated side steps saw Mina Ashido's agility shine, while Denki Kaminari's quick movements showcased his quirk's potential for speed. Next came the repeated side steps which were executed flawlessly by Izuku, his movements precise and calculated. Classmates marveled at his control, wondering how he managed to maintain such precision. The distance run proved no different, with Izuku displaying an uncanny level of endurance and stamina. How does he keep going like that? Tenya Ito wondered, impressed. In the seated toe touch and sit-ups, Jiro's core strength and determination were evident, and the class watched with awe as each student gave their all. As the evaluations continued with the seated toe touch and sit-ups, Izuku continued to dominate, leaving a trail of bewildered and impressed classmates behind him. Momo Wairozu, Shoto Todoroki, Tenio Aida, and Fumikage Tokoemi praised Izuku's abilities, recognizing his skill and dedication. Throughout the tests, Izuku's classmates couldn't help but marvel at his prowess, attributing his performance to some undiscovered quirk. I bet he's hiding some amazing power. He's got to be. Hantasero hypothesized. Yet, despite the accolades, Midoriya remained resolute in his claim of being quirkless. I believe him, Shoto Todoroki said, his gaze fixed on Midoriya. There's a sense of truth in his words. As the evaluations concluded, Mr. Ozawa acknowledged that Izuku's abilities were indeed extraordinary, yet he found himself unable to erase them. I've never seen anything like this, he muttered under his breath. Izuku's sincerity and composure coupled with the evidence of his quirkless status, convinced the teacher that there was more to this young hero than met the eye, leaving everyone in awe of Izuku's unprecedented display of power. Yet, amidst the astonishment, Mr. Ozawa's voice cut through the hushed atmosphere. Having the results of the tests finished, it shows Izuku in first place in all events, and in last place was Minora Mineta. No, this can be. I can't be expelled. 
I haven't even gotten a chance to have my own harem. He exclaimed with tears in his eyes. All the girls looked at him with disgusted expressions. Oh, by the way, nobody is getting expelled that was just a logical distribution to make you'll try harder. Mr. Ozawa explained with a creepy grin on his face. What did you guys not know that? I thought it was obvious should have I said something? Momo Yoi Rosa said with a calm expression and tone. Most of the class said in unison. Yes. Izuku spoke up. Actually expelled an entire class last year for not having any potential to speak of. Isn't that right, sensei? Said completely serious. He only nodded in agreement. Mineta steamed to his great relief. I am saved that doesn't mean that he won't change his mind later. Izuku stated coldly, Midoriya, Mr. Ozawa began, his gaze fixed on the young hero in training, I have been observing your performance closely. It's clear that you're holding back, not fully utilizing your abilities. Izuku's expression remained neutral, though a flicker of surprise crossed his eyes. Mr. Ozawa, I was wondering when you would have noticed, but I didn't think you would approach me after all the tests were completed, said Izuku with a neutral expression. The class exchanged bewildered glances, struggling to comprehend Mr. Ozawa's words, holding back. But he's been outperforming everyone by a wide margin, Momo Yoroza said, her mind racing. Akugu's frustration was evident as he muttered, If he's holding back, then what the hell else is he hiding from me? Mr. Ozawa's eyes bore into Izuka's, a challenge in his gaze. Prove me right. Do the softball test again, but this time... I want you to use your full power. Show me your limits. The request hung in the air, tension thickening as everyone awaited Izuku's response. Izuku nodded, understanding the significance of the challenge. With determination in his eyes, he picked up another softball, his dark purple kai subtly coiling around it. As he released the ball, the air crackled with energy, and the softball shot into the sky with incredible velocity. The class watched in awe as the scoreboard struggled to keep up with the rapidly increasing numbers. The display finally settled on a score that was even higher than before, a feat previously believed impossible. The astonishment in the air was palpable. Mr. Ozawa's words had not been in vain, Izuku had indeed pushed himself further. The students were left speechless, grappling with the reality that their classmate was even more powerful than they had ever imagined. As the softball finally disappeared from view, Izuku turned to Mr. Ozawa. Is this efficient? Izuku's performance left jaws dropping. He focused his dark purple kai into the ball, launching it into the sky with incredible force, earning a score of infinity. Did he just send that ball into orbit? Denki Kaminari exclaimed, his eyes wide with disbelief. Unbelievable. It's like he has superpowers, but he says he is still quirkless, Kyokajiro said. Her curiosity peaked. Bakugu's anger boiled over, demanding an explanation, but Izuku remained unfazed, calmly stating it was his own strength and control that produced such results. You think you're so special, Deku? Show me how you did that, Bakugu roared. Izuku simply replied, unfaltering in the face of Bakugu's rage. I've already explained it, Bakugu. It's not a quirk. It's hard work and kite control. Mr. Ozawa nodded, his expression unreadable. Very well done, Midoriya. The class exchanged odd glances, their perceptions of Midoriya forever altered. They couldn't help but marvel at the depths of his power and determination, realizing that his journey as a hero was far from ordinary. First day comes to an end. As the school day came to an end, Izuka made his way to the UA gate, where a sleek and luxurious limo was waiting for him provided by the Hero Public Safety Commission. His fellow classmates gathered around, their eyes wide with astonishment at the sight. Whoa, look at that car. Is that Midoriya's ride? Denki Kaminari exclaimed, staring in awe. Midoriya, you never mentioned you had such a fancy limo. Are you rich or something? Mina Ashido chimed in, her curiosity piqued. Izuka chuckled, trying to downplay the situation. It's not mine, really. It's just transportation provided by the government to help me get to and from school. The other students exchanged glances, still amazed by the opulence of the vehicle. Bakugu, however, scowled at the sight. Humph, showing off, trying to act all high and mighty with your fancy ride, he muttered under his breath. 
Izuka frowned, shaking his head. Bakugu, it's not like that. I'm just using the resources available to me to make sure I can focus on my studies and hero training. Meanwhile, the teachers, including All Might, observed the scene from a distance, their interest piqued by the side of the luxurious limo. All Might, in particular, was curious about Midoriya's connections with some unknown government support. He certainly has some impressive backing, All Might noted, thinking about the resources provided to Midoriya. Present Mick chimed in, yeah, but it makes you wonder who he really is. Not every student has a limo waiting for them after school, especially if it's provided to him by the government. Who do you guys think it is? Principal Nizu watched with a keen eye, always attuned to the mystery surrounding his students. Indeed, there's more to Midoriya than meets the eye. Back among the students, Ichaki Uraraka couldn't help but feel curious. Izuku is always so modest, but this limo makes me wonder if he has some hidden background. Zaya Ajri nodded her analytical mind at work. It is quite a mystery. But I'm sure there's a reason behind it all. The rumors and speculations about Izuka's background began to circulate around the school, adding to the intrigue surrounding the seemingly ordinary boy. Some wondered if he came from a wealthy family, while others speculated about connections to powerful hero agencies. Izuku, unaware of the chatter around him, continued to be focused on his studies and training, keeping his past a closely guarded secret. But the HPSC didn't say that he couldn't tell anyone that he has connections with government officials, since knowing about that poses no threat to them. He knew that his journey to becoming a hero was his own, and the limo was just a small part of the support he received. As the days passed, the curiosity about Izuka's limo only grew, and the mystery of his background deepened. The truth remained hidden, but one thing was clear. Izuka's presence at Yue was leaving an indelible mark on everyone around him, sparking admiration, intrigue, and even jealousy. Arriving home As the day's activities at Yue came to an end, Izuka had returned home, his mind still processing the events that had unfolded. He entered his house to find his mother, Enko Midoriya, waiting with a warm smile. Welcome back, Izuku, Enko greeted, her eyes shining with pride. How was your day at school? Izuku returned the smile, a mixture of exhaustion and satisfaction evident on his face. It was eventful, Mom. Lots of training and tests. He moved to the living room, where a communication device provided by the Hero Public Safety Commission awaited his report. After connecting, he relayed the details of his day. I didn't see All Might at school today but I could sense he was nearby watching me, he began, his tone thoughtful. I also kept a close watch on Momo Yoerazu, as per the request of her father. She seems to be adjusting well. The voice on the other end, representing the HPSC, responded, Good work, hit. And how did your homeroom teacher situation turn out? Its expression shifted to a more serious one. My homeroom teacher is Mr. Ozawa, also known as the underground pro-hero racerhead. He's a strict teacher, but I can see his dedication to our training. The voice chuckled. Erase her head, that should keep things interesting. Your classmates' reactions about you and your support of us. They were surprised, to say the least, he'd admitted. I assured them that I have the support of a government program, but I revealed nothing about working with the Hero Public Safety Commission, and that seemed to satisfy their curiosity for now about me leaving in a fancy limo. But eventually... Principal Nizu and All Might are going to have word with me at some point. I can just feel it in the air. The voice on the communication device sounded pleased. Good job handling the situation. Remember, maintaining your cover is crucial. And now, you're free for the rest of the day. Relax and recharge, hit. Izuka's shoulders visibly relaxed, a sense of relief washing over him. Thank you. I appreciate it. As the communication ended, Inko approached her son, concern, etching her features. Izuku, dear, are you doing okay? You've been through a lot today. Izuku smiled at his mother's genuine worry. I'm fine, mom. Just a bit tired. But I promise to take it easy for the rest of the day. Inko's expression softened with maternal affection. All right, just remember to take care of yourself. I'm always here if you need anything. Izuku nodded gratitude shining in his eyes. I know, mom. Thank you. With the reassurance of his mother's support, Izuku retreated to his room, his thoughts a mixture of the day's events and the path ahead. 
as he settled in for a moment of relaxation, he couldn't help but feel a sense of purpose and determination, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead in his journey to become a hero. Battle Training Exercise As the next day of UA went underway, the students of Class 1 awaited to see what they were going to take part in this class session, as well as awaited to see who would be teaching them. As all the students were going to do, they had conversations about themselves with Izuku, engaging in an intellectual conversation with Momowairozu, about how the hero chorus is going for them so far, and what they both expect to unfold for today's class activities. However, the sound of footsteps interrupted the class as they seemed to be getting loader and loader, when out come through the door came out all might in all his heroic glory. I am here coming through the door like a normal person, said All Might with a loud voice and his signature smile. No way it's All Might, said Denki Kaminari with a surprised and excited look on his face. Wow, he is a teacher here that's so manly, said Ajiro Kurishima with the same expression as Kaminari. Isn't he wearing his Silver Age costume? said Shu Ajri, noticing it first. The day All Might came to class one of her combat training, the atmosphere was charged with anticipation. The students were excited to learn from the symbol of peace himself. As All Might explained the importance of hero costumes, the room seemed to buzz with excitement. All right, my young heroes. As you embark on your journey to become pro heroes, your costumes will be crucial in aiding your hero work. All Might boomed, his presence commanding attention. As he said those words, the walls around the classroom seemed to shift, revealing cases with hero costumes each marked with a number. The students gasped at the sight of their potential hero outfits. However, all might notice that Azuka Midoriya didn't seem to have a case with the costume. His brows furrowed in concern as he approached the young hero. Young Midoriya, it seems like you don't have your costume case. Did you forget to submit a hero costume design? All might asked. To everyone's surprise, Izuka calmly responded, No, I have my costume right here. He revealed a sleek black case, identical to the ones holding other students' costumes. As he opened the case, the room fell silent. Inside lay the same assassin uniform that Hit once wore in his previous life. The suit was form-fitting, designed for stealth and efficiency. All Might's eyes widened in recognition. That's an interesting choice of costume, young Midoriya, he remarked cautiously. Izuku nodded, unfazed by the attention. It's the outfit I'm most comfortable and proficient in. During my time with the Hero Public Safety Commission, it proved to be the most effective for my work. Rumors spread through the classroom as the students whispered amongst themselves, intrigued and curious about Izuka's past. All Might couldn't help but feel a mixture of concern and curiosity. An assassin. That is what it looks like. An assassin outfit. That sounds so cool. Denki Kaminari blurted out, breaking the tension. Its expression remained unchanged. It's not about being cool. It's about efficiency and getting the job done. All Might nodded thoughtfully, understanding the young hero's perspective. You're right, Midoriya. A hero costume should reflect who you are and what you stand for. If this outfit represents you and your abilities, then it's the right choice. Izuku appreciated All Might's understanding. Thank you, All Might. I'll use this outfit to the best of my abilities to become a true hero. Class 1, it was buzzing with excitement. The students had put a lot of thought into their hero costumes, each reflecting their unique personalities and quirks. As they gathered in the training area, they couldn't help but admire each other's outfits. Wow, you're Raka. Your costume is amazing. Birashima, you look like a real tank. Look at Jiro's new earphone jacks. They're so cool. The compliments flew back and forth as the students admired the creativity and functionality of their classmates' costumes. It was a moment of camaraderie, a reminder that they were all here to become heroes, but the most dramatic entrance was yet to come. As the awe-inspiring bike came to a stop, Izuka Midoriya, or rather, Hit, arrived on the scene. He didn't wear a conventional hero costume like the rest of his classmates. Instead, he stood there, clad in his assassin outfit. The students couldn't help but be taken aback by his appearance. Izuku's attire was sleek and tactical, adorned with a mix of dark and vibrant colors. It was clear that every element served a purpose, making him look both enigmatic and formidable. His calm and collected demeanor added to the aura of mystery that surrounded him. 
The reaction among his classmates was mixed. Most were impressed and intrigued by the outfit, recognizing that it suited Izuku's unique style. They admired his confidence in making a bold choice. Their murmurs of approval and curiosity filled the air. However, Bakugo scowled, his competitive spirit flaring. What the hell are you wearing, Deku? Trying to show off again, Dodoroki, ever composed, simply observed Izuku with his bicolored eyes, assessing the situation without revealing much emotion. With that entrance, the stage was set for the combat training exercise, and the students of Class 1 were ready to put their skills and costumes to the test. The students of Class 1 gathered in the training area, eagerly discussing how they were going to choose their teams for the upcoming combat training exercise. They chattered excitedly, debating strategies and the advantages of working with different classmates. Questions buzzed in the air like mosquitoes on a hot summer night. Can we just pick whoever we want? I want to team up with Bakugo. He's got a crazy powerful quirk. I heard Todoroki's eyes could cover a whole battlefield. I'm teaming up with him. All Might, their teacher for the day, stood at the front, listening to the cacophony of voices. He tried to respond, well, you see. But he was interrupted by more voices, all clamoring for his attention. I want to be on the same team as Midoriya, said Ichaka Yuraka. I've always wanted to see what Jiro's earphone jacks can do, stated Momo Wairosa. My quirk is great for close combat. Who's with me? said an excited Aijiro Kurishima. All Might, a bit flustered by the barrage of questions, smiled apologetically. My quirk isn't super hearing, you know. Amid the noise, a calm and determined voice cut through the chaos. It was Izuku, who had an air of experience about him that transcended his young age. Everyone, he said, capturing their attention. In the real world, heroes don't get to choose who they work with. They must always be ready to adapt and team up with heroes they've never worked with before to fight villains and protect civilians. You can't always choose your partners in the field. The students fell silent, contemplating Izuku's words. He continued, We should take this opportunity to learn how to work with different quirks, to adapt to various strategies, and to become more versatile heroes. This is what training is all about. The thoughtful hush settled over the group. They realized that Izuka's words held truth and wisdom. All Might, grateful for the support, nodded in agreement. Young Midoriya is right. This exercise is not just about testing your abilities, but also about your ability to work together effectively. So, don't fret about choosing your team. Be ready for any challenge that comes your way. With Izuka's guidance and All Might's approval, the students began to see the training exercise in a new light, not just as a test of their quirks but as an opportunity to grow as heroes. They would embrace the unpredictable nature of hero work, facing each challenge with adaptability and unity. All the teams are made and are as follows. Izuku Midoriya and the Chako Yurarika, Team A, versus Katsuki Bakugo and Tenya Aida, Team D, Shoto Todoroki and Maizo Shoji, Team B, versus Mashiro Ojiro and Turu Hagakure, Team I, Fumikage Tokoemi and Saya Ajui, Team H, Versus Ajiro Kurishima and Han Tasiro, Team J. Enki Kaminari and Kyokajiro, Team G. Versus Momo Yoirozu and Minoru Mineta, Team C. Yuga Oyama and Mina Ashido, Team E. Saito and Koji Koda, Team F. First match. The combat training between Izuka Midoriya and Ichaka Yurarika versus Tenya Ida and Katsuki Bakugo began with intensity. Izuka knew they had to strategize if they wanted to capture both the villain team and the fake bomb. He quickly devised a plan, whispering it to Ochako. All right, Yurarika, here's what we'll do, Izuka said in a hushed tone. You use your quirk to make the ground float, creating obstacles for the villains. While they're occupied, I'll use my speed to get to the bomb first. Ichako nodded, impressed with Izuka's strategic thinking. Got it. I'll create distractions while you make your move. As the battle ensued, Ichako used her quirk to manipulate gravity, levitating objects and creating floating platforms. This caught Tenya and Bakugo off guard, giving Izuku the opening he needed. Izuku darted towards the bomb with incredible speed, avoiding Bakugo's explosions and Tenya's fast kicks. He reached for the bomb, grabbing it securely before turning to face the villains. Yurarika, now? He called out. With a determined expression, Ochako released the floating platforms, 
sending them crashing towards the villains. The distraction allowed Azuka to close in on them swiftly. Itsuki Bakugo, always eager for a challenge, grinned as he faced Azuka head on. You think you can take me down, Deku? Izuka remained composed, his eyes focused. I'm not here to fight you, Bakugo. I just want to capture the bomb and end this. Meanwhile, Tenya Ida, ever the strategist, attempted to outmaneuver Ichako. He utilized his speed to keep her at bay, but Ichako had her own tricks up her sleeve. Using her quirk creatively, Ichako manipulated the gravity around Tenya's legs, making him lose his balance. It was a temporary advantage but enough for Ichako to quickly move towards Izuku and the bomb. As the battle continued, Izuku and Ichako displayed impressive teamwork, coordinating their moves to keep the villains on their toes. Their classmates watched in awe, recognizing the synergy between the two heroes. Izuku and Ichako are amazing together. They're like a well-oiled machine. Momowairoza marveled. All Might, observing the battle, couldn't help but be impressed by Izuku's skills. However, a hint of concern crept into his mind as he noticed Izuku's familiarity with combat techniques. He wondered if the young hero had received such training before joining Yue. I need to have a serious conversation with Midoriya later, All Might thought to himself, keeping his suspicions to himself for now. As the battle came to a close, Izuku and Ochako managed to outweat the villain team and capture both the villains and the fake bomb. The class erupted into cheers and applause, celebrating their victory. All Might approached Izuku after the training session. Well done, Midoriya. You showed great teamwork and quick thinking out there, he praised, hiding his concerns for the moment. Izuku smiled gratefully. Thank you, All Might. I'm doing my best to become a hero. All Might's resolve strengthened. He needed to know more about Izuku's background and the source of his exceptional combat skills. With the safety of Yue and its students at stake, he knew he couldn't afford to overlook any potential threats. As the class continued with their hero training, All Might vowed to get to the bottom of the mystery surrounding Izuka hit and ensure the safety of the school and its students. Second match The next match began with the teams making their way over to the training ground. Maizo Shoji using his quirk. Dipli Arms makes ears to locate the other team which turns out to be on the top floor. Understanding his role in the plan, Shoji positioned himself strategically outside the building, prepared to execute the strategy outlined by Todoroki. Todoroki, with unwavering determination, unleashed his elemental powers. A surge of ice emanated from his position, swiftly encasing the building that housed the fake bomb. Don't get caught in this, Todoroki warned Shoji, who nodded in acknowledgement. Inside the frozen building, Todoroki navigated the icy terrain with precision. Hagakure's attempts at unseen attacks were thwarted by Todoroki's keen awareness. As he approached the fake bomb, he told Mashiro Jiro and Toru Hagakure, Tamai, that if they moved they tear the skin from their feet, and that surrender was their only option. Todoroki touched the frozen surface of the building, signaling a victory for Team B. Third match. The stage was set for the heroes versus villains training match, and Team H comprised of Fumikage Tokoemi and Saya Ajui, faced off against Team J, comprised of Ejiro Kurishima and Hanta Sierra. Team H, with Tokoemi's dark shadow and Ajui's versatile quirk, Frog, had a unique set of abilities that promised an engaging confrontation. On the opposing side, Team J, with Kurishima's hardened skin and Sierra's tape-based techniques, aimed to prove their mettle in this training exercise. Dark Shadow, an embodiment of Tokoemi's quirk, surged forward with formidable strength while Ajui leaked with agility surveying the battlefield. Tokoemi. Dark Shadow, be ready. Ajui, let's coordinate our moves strategically. Ajui. Got it. We need to focus on capturing either the bomb or the villains. Stay sharp, Tokoemi. On the opposing side, Team J discussed their approach. Furoshima. Siro, be ready to cover me. I'll charge in and create an opening. Zero. I'll set up tape barriers to control their movements. Let's show them what Team J is made of. As the match commenced, both teams strategized on the fly, adapting to the movements of their opponents. Dark Shadow surged forward with formidable strength, while Azure leaped with agility, surveying the battlefield. The Koami, Dark Shadow, create a defensive barrier. Azure, go for the bomb. Birashima, 
resilient and unyielding, charged ahead with his hardening quirk, determined to disrupt Team H's plans. Ciro strategically utilized his tape, creating barriers and obstacles to impede the progress of their opponents. Firashima, I'll keep Tokoyami busy. Ciro, cover my flank. Ciro on it. Amid the chaos, Ajui spotted an opening. Ajui, Tokoyami now. Her tongue lashed out, wrapping around the fake bomb hidden on Team J's side. The audience erupted into cheers as Ajui successfully secured the target, signaling a victory for Team H. Ajui, we did it. Great teamwork, Tokoyami. Tokoyami, well done, Ajui. Team H prevails. The aftermath of the match was met with a mixture of relief and determination. Team H should showcase their ability to coordinate their quirks effectively, securing a win in this high-stakes training scenario. The experience would undoubtedly contribute to their growth as aspiring heroes, learning the intricacies of teamwork and strategy on the path to becoming true champions. Fourth match. The arena crackled with anticipation as Team G, consisting of Denki Kaminari and Kyokajiro, faced off against Team C, made up of Momo Yawarosu and Minoru Mineta. The clash promised a mix of electrical currents, sound waves, and inventive strategies. Kaminari. Jiro, let's hit them with a combination of sound and electricity. We've got this. Jiro, agreed. Stay focused, Kaminari. We need to capture that bomb. On the opposing side, Team C prepared for the encounter. Aorozu, Mineta, focus on creating defensive barriers with your balls. I'll try to outsmart them. Mineta. Yeah, yeah, got it. But Momo, you look amazing today, by the way. Aorozu, annoyed at this, only said thank you, Mineta. Now, let's concentrate on the match. As the match began, Kaminari unleashed a burst of electricity, creating a dazzling display of lights. Jiro, using her earphone jacks, pinpointed the location of their opponents. Kaminari, get ready for a shock, Team C. On the other side, Yoyoza created a series of ingenious gadgets aiming to outmaneuver Team G. Yoyoza. Mineta, maintain a defensive position. We'll counterattack strategically. But, unbeknownst to Yaoirozu, Mineta's attention wavered. Mineta. Internal monologue, Momo looks stunning today. I can't help but admire her. While Mineta was lost in his thoughts, Kaminari and Jiro capitalized on the distraction. Byro. Kaminari. Now. Jiro's sound waves disrupted Mineta's focus, causing him to fumble with his defensive balls. Kaminari seized the opportunity and incapacitated Team C with a surge of electricity. Kaminari. Gotcha. Team G takes the win. Jiro. Good job, Kaminari. Let's secure that bomb and wrap this up. The victory for Team G showcased their ability to coordinate their quirks efficiently. As they celebrated their success, the distracted Minoru Mineta regained his focus, realizing the importance of staying vigilant during hero training. Mineta. Sorry about that, Momo. I guess I got a bit carried away. Warozu. Angered by her teammate, Mineta, you are the worst. Learn from this and do better next time. The match served as a valuable lesson for Team C, emphasizing the significance of maintaining focus and teamwork even amid personal distractions. Fifth match. At the training ground, Team E, consisting of Yuga Oyama and Mina Ashido, squared off against Team F, comprising Rikito Sato and Koji Koda. The tension in the air was palpable as both teams readied themselves for the upcoming clash. Aoyama. Mina, my dear, we shall dazzle them with our brilliance. I'll be the beacon, and you, the unstoppable force. Bushido. Sure thing, Aoyama. Let's show them what Temi is made of. On the opposing side, Sato and Koda prepared for the encounter. Sato. Koda, stick close to me. We need to strategize and make the best of our quirks. Koda. Softly, I'll do my best, Sato. As the match commenced, Aoyama. True to his flashing nature, released a burst of sparkling light, illuminating the battlefield. Aoyama. Behold, the radiant brilliance of my naval laser. Now, Mina, charge in. Ashido, her body transformed into a fluid, acid like substance, moved swiftly toward Team F. However, Sato intercepted her path with a series of hardened sugar constructs. Sato? 
Hold on, Ashido. I won't let you get through that easily. Meanwhile, Kota struggled with his shyness, making it difficult to communicate or engage in direct combat. Kota, whispering to himself, I wish I could be more assertive. Maybe I should focus on calling for help. Seeing Kota's hesitation, Aoyama seized the opportunity to blindside Team F with a dazzling naval laser. Aoyama, shine on, my radiant beam. Temi takes the lead. But Sato temporarily disoriented, Ashido utilized her agility to slip past his defenses and reach the fake bomb. Ashido. Got it. Temi secures the win. As Temi celebrated their victory, Sato turned to Koda, recognizing the challenges they faced. Sato. Koda, it's okay. We'll work on our teamwork and communication. We can do better next time. Koda, nodding, yeah, I'll try my best, Sato. The match highlighted the importance of effective communication and understanding each team member's strengths and weaknesses. Team F's loss prompted them to focus on improving their coordination and leveraging their quirks more strategically in future battles. Back with Class 1A, in the aftermath of the intense heroes versus villains training matches, All Might, still in his might form, stood before the exhausted class, awaiting their feedback. All Might. Well, young heroes, that was quite the spectacle. Now, who among you believes they were the MVP of these matches? Izuka raised his hand confidently, his sharp gaze surveying the class. All eyes turned to him as he took the floor. I believe Team A had the most outstanding performance. Ichaku, Uraraka and I were able to strategize effectively, demonstrating synergy and adaptability. Now, let's break down the others. His analytical tone captivated the class as he went on to assess each team providing constructive criticism and praise. Shoto Todoroki, you displayed remarkable control and strategy, freezing the environment to your advantage. Maizo Shoji, your support was crucial. Team B has exceptional teamwork. Well done. His discerning eyes then fell upon Team G. Anki Kaminari, Kyokujiro, you could have won with better coordination. Kyokujiro, you need to take control of the situation. You're a natural leader, don't hesitate. Turning to Team C, he offered straightforward feedback. Momoirozu, you exhibited excellent quirk usage and strategic thinking. But Minoru Mineta, your focus seemed elsewhere. Stay sharp, this isn't the time for distractions. Acknowledging Team E's victory, he spoke to Yuga and Mina. Yuga Aoyama, your light manipulation was brilliant, blinding the opposition. Mina Ashido, your agility was on point. Excellent teamwork. Finally, addressing Team F, he focused on Sato and Koda. Akito Sato, your super strength provided good defense. Koji Koda, work on asserting yourself more. Communication is key. Team D, there were notable issues. Tenya Ada, well, your speed is a tremendous asset. Rushing into situations without coordination can lead to vulnerability. You acknowledge your mistakes, which is commendable. Katsuki Bakugo, your explosiveness is potent, but a hero works best within a team. You need to trust your teammates more. Beta, recognizing his errors, nodded in acknowledgement. I appreciate the feedback. I'll work on better coordination. However, Bakugu, true to his explosive nature, erupted in anger. This is nonsense. Deku just got lucky. Ida, you're slowing us down. If it was a real fight, none of this crap would matter. I'll take him down any day. Akugu, this exercise is about teamwork and strategy. In a real fight, unpredictability and adaptability matter. It's not about luck. It's about making the right choices. Akugu continued his tirade, claiming luck, cheating, and dismissing the value of the exercise. The class, however, observed silently, some conflicted, others supportive and a few simply intrigued by the ongoing dynamics between the two powerhouses. The class listened attentively, and though Azuka's critiques were precise, they were delivered with an air of constructive guidance rather than criticism. The students recognized the value of his insights. All Might. Impressive analysis, young Midoriya. Your observations are astute. Class, take these words to heart. Now rest up. We've got more challenges ahead. As the students dispersed, many couldn't help but acknowledge the wisdom in Izuku's evaluations, fostering a newfound respect for his strategic mind and analytical prowess. Next one a class. 
The time had come for class one to elect their class representatives. As the students gathered, whispers of anticipation filled the room. All eyes turned to Izuku and Momo Yoerazu, recognizing their leadership qualities. After a round of voting, the results were announced Izuku had been elected as Class 1A's president with Momo Yoerazu as the vice president. The news left the class buzzing with excitement except for one glaring exception, Katsuki Bakugu. What? You all voted for that corkless loser to be in charge. Are you idiots? Bakugu fumed, his voice seething with anger. The rest of the class exchanged glances, unfazed by Bakugu's outburst. Kyoka Jiro rolled her eyes. Well, maybe if you didn't act like a complete jerk all the time, people would be more willing to support you, she retorted. As Bakugu continued to grumble, Ichaki Uraraka stepped in with a smile. Izuku and Momo both have great qualities that make them perfect for leading the class. They're responsible, knowledgeable, and have a strong sense of teamwork. Zaya Ezri chimed in. Plus, they're both really approachable and always willing to listen to others. Despite the grumbling from Bakugu, the majority of the class agreed with the outcome. They saw in Izuku, Hit and Momo the potential for fostering a positive and united class environment. Yeah, they've both shown great leadership skills and training exercises, Tenuda added, supporting the decision. As the class settled into the new leadership, Izuku and Momo took their roles seriously. They organized study groups, scheduled training sessions, and encouraged teamwork among their peers. It's impressive how they managed to balance their hero studies with their responsibilities as class representatives, Fumikage Tokoemi noted, appreciating their dedication. Throughout it all, Izuku remained humble and focused on the greater good. I may not have a quirk, but I won't let that hold me back from supporting my classmates and creating a strong class, he said with determination. Momo with her keen intellect and calm demeanor, complemented Izuku's leadership style. Our class is a team, and I believe we can achieve great things together, she expressed, motivating her peers. As the days passed, the class saw the positive impact of Izuku and Momo's leadership. The atmosphere grew more supportive and cooperative, fostering an environment where everyone could thrive. Akugu's animosity towards Izuku didn't waver, but he couldn't deny the positive changes happening in the class. Secretly, he wondered if maybe there was more to Izuku's abilities than he initially thought. In the end, Class 1 had chosen their representatives wisely. Izuku and Momo proved that strength of character and compassion could lead the way, inspiring their classmates to strive for greatness and unity. Yue. Cafeteria. As the lunchtime bell rang, Class 1 had dispersed to the cafeteria and various hangout spots around Yue. Meanwhile, all Might and Principal Niza made their way to the security room where they could monitor the school's surveillance cameras. All Might, are you certain about this? Niza inquired, his whiskers twitching with curiosity. All Might's expression was serious. I have my concerns, Principal Nizu. There's something about young Midoriya that I can't quite put my finger on. I need to make sure he's not involved in anything dangerous. With a flick of his paw, Niza brought up the camera feed focused on the lunch area. The students chatted, laughed, and enjoyed their meals, and among them was Izuka Hit, sitting with Ichaki Uraka and Tenya Ida. They watched as Izuka engaged in friendly conversation, laughing with his friends. His demeanor was open and genuine, and there was no hint of anything suspicious. Look at him, Principal Niza. He seems like a regular student, but there's something I can't shake off, All Might said his concern evident. Nizu observed Izuka closely, his keen intellect analyzing every move. Perhaps it's just his past experiences that make you wary, all might. He did come from a rather unique background, after all with a single mother to raise him on her own, and the father leaving during his early life. All might nodded, acknowledging the possibility. You're right, but I can't help but feel that there's more to it. I'll keep a close eye on him, just to be sure. As they continued to watch, Izuka finished his lunch and got up from his seat. His expression was content, and he waved goodbye to his friends as he left the cafeteria. He seems like a good kid, doesn't he? Niza remarked, still analyzing the footage. All Might agreed, yes, he does. And he's shown great dedication and integrity as a hero so far. I just want to ensure he stays on the right path. As the surveillance continued, Izuku was seen interacting with other students, 
helping someone who had dropped their books and participating in casual conversations. He appeared to be genuinely caring and approachable to everyone he encountered. All Might couldn't help but smile at the sight. You're right, Principal Niza. He truly embodies what it means to be a hero, Niza nodded. Indeed, he does. But it's also essential for us to maintain vigilance. Let's keep monitoring him discreetly, just to be sure. As the lunchtime surveillance concluded, All Might and Niza left the security room. Their concerns hadn't vanished entirely, but they were reassured by the genuine goodness they saw in Izuku. However, they both agreed that being cautious and observant was the best course of action, especially given the unpredictable nature of hero life. Unbeknownst to them, Izuku continued his day, blissfully unaware of the scrutiny he was under. He remained focused on his studies and his training, determined to be the best hero he could be, regardless of the shadows of his past. The HS CHQ. It found himself in a dimly lit underground meeting room. Seated around a sleek black table were three female agents of the BHSC, Hero Public Safety Commission, each with a confident and flirtatious demeanor. Agent Swift, with sleek silver hair that cascaded down her back, leaned forward with a playful smile. Her quirk, speed burst, allowed her to move at incredible velocities for short bursts, but left her temporarily drained afterward. Well, well, hit, she purred, I've heard so much about your skills. Care to show me some of your moves? Agent Fong, a tall and imposing figure with shark teeth-like enhancements along her forearms, winked at him. Her quirk, enhanced carnage, gave her heightened strength and agility, but her battle ferocity had earned her the nickname Fong. You know, hit, she purred, I'm a for a strong, capable man. Show me what you've got. Agent Tiger, with graceful poise and tiger-like stripes along her limbs, flashed a seductive smile. Her quirk, Beast's Grace, granted her enhanced senses and the ability to mimic the movements and attacks of animals. Hit, she said softly, I've always been drawn to those with a strong connection to nature. I'd love to see your wild side. Pit, though caught off guard by their flirtatious advances, maintained his composure. I appreciate the compliments, he replied with a hint of a smile but I'm here to assist in any way I can, regardless of my charm. Agent Swift chuckled, her eyes never leaving him. Confident and humble. I like that. Agent Fong leaned closer, her tone sultry. Hit, we have a mission that requires your unique skills. Think you can handle it? Agent Tiger added with a seductive purr, I'm sure you'll rise to the occasion, just as you always do. It nodded, feeling the weight of their admiration and expectations. I'll give it my all, as always. The three agents exchanged glances, a silent understanding passing between them. Then, Swift spoke with a sly grin. Well, it, let's get down to business. We have a mission that needs our attention. As they discussed the details of the mission, Hit couldn't help but chuckle inwardly at the unexpected turn of events. He knew this mission would be a test of his abilities, both as a hero and in navigating the playful advances of his admirers. Mission details. The mission briefing revealed a pressing concern. A group of villains known for their ruthless attacks on innocent civilians had resurfaced in the city. Their leader, a formidable villain with a penchant for chaos, was rumored to be planning a large-scale operation that threatened the safety of countless lives. Agent Swift, her silver hair glinting under the dim lights, outlined the mission objectives with precision. Our task, she began, her voice steady, is to infiltrate the villain's hideout, gather intel on their plans, and apprehend their leader before they can execute their next move. Agent Fong, her sharp features etched with determination, emphasized the urgency of the situation. Time is of the essence, she asserted, her voice carrying a sense of urgency. We need to act swiftly and decisively to prevent any further harm. Agent Tiger, her feline grace evident in every movement, nodded in agreement. Our primary goal, she added, her tone resolute, is to neutralize the threat and ensure the safety of the city's residents. It absorbed the gravity of their words, understanding the gravity of the task ahead. Understood, he replied, his voice steady despite the weight of responsibility. I'll do whatever it takes to protect the people. As they finalized their plans and prepared to embark on their mission, Hit felt a surge of determination coursing through him. He knew that the road ahead would be fraught with danger. But he also knew that with teamwork, dedication, and unwavering resolve, 
they stood a chance against even the most formidable adversaries. With the mission parameters clear and their objectives set, Hit and the three agents braced themselves for the challenges that lay ahead. Together, they would confront the darkness threatening their city and emerge victorious, proving that true heroes always rise to the occasion, no matter the odds. Beach SC mission begins. Under the cloak of night, Hid and the three agents of the Beach SC ventured into the heart of the city, their senses keen and their resolve unwavering. The air crackled with tension as they approached the suspected hideout of the notorious villain group, their footsteps echoing softly against the pavement. As they neared the dilapidated warehouse rumored to be the villain's lair, Agent Swift signaled for caution, her eyes scanning the shadows for any signs of movement. With practiced precision, they approached the entrance, their movements synchronized in silent communication. It, his senses heightened by years of training, detected the faintest hint of danger lingering in the air. He motioned for the agents to hold back, his instincts warning him of potential traps lying in wait. With a nod of acknowledgement, Agent Fang and Agent Tiger fell into formation behind him, their movements fluid and purposeful. Together, they advanced into the darkness, each step a testament to their unwavering determination. As they breached the threshold of the warehouse, they were met with a barrage of attacks from the villainous occupants. Lying in S reflexes kicked into overdrive as he deftly dodged incoming projectiles, his movements a blur of precision and grace. Agent Swift unleashed a burst of speed, her quirk propelling her forward with unmatched agility as she engaged the enemy head-on. Her strikes were swift and decisive, each blow calculated to incapacitate without causing lasting harm. Agent Fong, her enhanced strength and agility on full display, countered the enemy's advances with unmatched ferocity. Her movements were fluid and precise, her attacks landing with devastating force against their adversaries. Meanwhile, Agent Tiger, her senses attuned to the slightest shifts in the environment, navigated the chaos with unparalleled grace. With each movement, she mirrored the fluidity of the wild, her attacks, a testament to her mastery over her quirk. In the dimly lit confines of the warehouse, hit squared off against the imposing figure of the boss villain, their confrontation a clash of wills and determination. The air crackled with tension as they circled each other, the weight of their impending battle hanging heavy in the air. With a steely gaze, Hit assessed his opponent, his mind sharp and focused as he analyzed the villain's movements for any sign of weakness. Despite the villain's menacing presence, Hit remained composed, his resolve unshakable in the face of danger. As the first blow was struck, Hit's instincts kicked into overdrive, his movements fluid and precise, as he deftly countered each attack with unmatched skill. With each strike, he sought out weaknesses in his opponent's defenses, his movements calculated and deliberate. The boss villain, caught off guard by Hit's unwavering resolve, faltered under the weight of his relentless assault. With each passing moment, Hit gained the upper hand, his determination unwavering as he pressed forward with unwavering resolve. With a flicker of uncertainty in his eyes, the boss villain found himself faced with an ultimatum, delivered with unwavering conviction by Hit. You have two options, he declared, his voice steady and unwavering. Surrender now, and your life will be spared. Or continue this futile resistance and face the consequences. The boss villain, cornered and defeated, weighed his options carefully, the gravity of Hit's words sinking in with each passing moment. With a resigned nod, he conceded defeat, his spirit broken under the weight of Hit's unwavering resolve. As the tension in the dimly lit warehouse reached its peak, the defeated boss villain lay sprawled on the ground, his gaze fixated on the enigmatic figure before him. Through the haze of pain and defeat, snippets of conversation floated through the air, catching his attention and stirring a sense of dread within him. These hit, the legendary assassin, whispered one of the minions, his voice trembling with fear. We're lucky to be alive. The boss villain's eyes widened in disbelief, his mind reeling at the realization of who he had been pitted against. Hit, the name alone was enough to send shivers down his spine, a whispered legend among the criminal underworld, feared and revered in equal measure. As he struggled to rise to his feet, the weight of his defeat pressing down upon him, the boss villain couldn't shake the sense of impending doom that settled over him like a shroud. To have faced Hit in combat, and lived to tell the tale was a feat few could boast, and yet, he knew that his survival was nothing short of miraculous. Remacking against the pain that coursed through his battered body, 
The boss villain cast a wary glance in his direction, his voice trembling as he addressed his formidable adversary. You're hit, he muttered, his words laced with disbelief and awe. The legendary assassin. It regarded him with a cool detachment, his expression unreadable as he absorbed the weight of the boss villain's revelation. At that moment, the air crackled with tension, the silence punctuated only by the faint echoes of their confrontation. For the boss villain, the realization that he had faced off against one of the most feared figures in the criminal underworld sent a chill down his spine, a stark reminder of the precariousness of his position. To have come face to face with Hit and emerged relatively unscathed was a testament to his resilience, though he knew that his luck could only hold out for so long. As he struggled to process the gravity of the situation, the boss villain's mind raced with thoughts of his narrow escape and the daunting prospect of what lay ahead. In the presence of Hit, there could be no illusions of victory, only the cold, hard truth of his mortality. In that fleeting moment, as the boss villain grappled with the magnitude of his defeat, the legend of Hit loomed large, casting a shadow over his world and leaving an indelible mark on his consciousness. And as he braced himself for the uncertain future that lay ahead, one thing was abundantly clear. The encounter with Hit would haunt him long after the dust had settled, and the echoes of their battle faded into memory. As the dust settled and the echoes of their battle faded into the darkness, Hit emerged victorious, his determination unwavering in the face of adversity. With his mission accomplished and the city safe once more, he stood as a beacon of hope in the darkness, his unwavering resolve a testament to the strength of his character. As the echoes of their victory reverberated through the warehouse, the three agents exchanged triumphant glances, their faces alight with exhilaration at the successful completion of their mission. Agent Swift, Agent Fong, and Agent Tiger approached Hit, their expressions brimming with excitement and anticipation of celebration. Wow, Hit, that was incredible! exclaimed Agent Swift, her voice filled with admiration. You showed that villain who's boss. Agent Fong chimed in, her eyes gleaming with pride. You handled yourself like a true hero out there, Hit. I knew we could count on you. Agent Tiger nodded in agreement, her gaze unwavering as she regarded Hit with newfound respect. You exceeded all our expectations, Hit. We couldn't have done it without you. Despite their enthusiasm, Hit remained composed, his focus unwavering as he addressed the three agents. Thank you, but my work here is not yet finished, he replied, his tone resolute. I still have responsibilities to attend to, and I cannot afford to celebrate just yet. Agent Swift's smile faltered slightly, her disappointment evident as she regarded Hit with a mixture of understanding and regret. But Hit, she protested, we wanted to celebrate this victory together, as a team. Agent Fong nodded in agreement, her expression mirroring Swift's sentiment. You've more than earned a night of celebration, Hit, you deserve it. It shook his head his resolve unyielding as he reiterated his stance. I appreciate the offer, but I'm afraid I must decline, he explained. And besides, I don't drink alcohol, so I wouldn't be much fun at a celebration anyway. The agents exchanged glances, a shared understanding passing between them, as they realized the depth of Hit's commitment to his duties. With a nod of acceptance, they conceded defeat, their disappointment tempered by admiration for his unwavering dedication. Understood. Hit, said Agent Tiger, her voice tinged with respect. We respect your decision. Just know that we're grateful for your help tonight. With a final nod of appreciation, Hit bid the agents farewell, his thoughts already turning to the next challenge that awaited him. As he vanished into the night, the agents watched him go, their admiration for his unwavering resolve burning brighter than ever before. Later, as they walked out of the warehouse, Agent Swift let out a playful sigh. Such a shame, she said, casting a sidelong glance at her fellow agents. It is quite the catch, isn't he? Agent Fong chuckled, a mischievous twinkle in her eye. Indeed he is, Swift. It's a pity we couldn't convince him to join us for some fun. Agent Tiger nodded in agreement, though her expression remained stoic. Perhaps another time, she mused, her thoughts already drifting to the next mission. Despite their disappointment, the agents couldn't help but feel a lingering sense of attraction toward Hit, their playful banter masking a genuine admiration for his unwavering dedication to his duties. As they disappeared into the night, their thoughts lingered on the enigmatic hero who had captured their attention and left them yearning for more. 
New Day. The morning sunlight cast a golden hue over the UA. Campus as Izuku stepped out of his sleek black limo, his expression set in a determined mask. But as soon as his foot touched the pavement, he was enveloped in a whirlwind of flashing cameras and clamoring reporters, their questions coming at him like a relentless barrage. Is it true that All Might is teaching at UA? Now, what subject is he teaching? Heroics. What are your thoughts on having the symbol of peace as your teacher? The questions swirled around him, threatening to overwhelm him with their intensity. But Izuku remained unfazed, his mind already racing with a plan. With a swift movement, he activated his time skip, the world around him blurring as he slipped past the reporters and made his way toward the school entrance. For a moment, the reporters were left bewildered, their cameras trained on an empty space where Izuku had just been standing. Had he even been there at all, or had it all been a figment of their imagination? But as Izuka vanished from their sight, the reporters were left with nothing but their unanswered questions, their confusion palpable in the air. And as they scrambled to make sense of what had just happened, Izuka disappeared into the halls of Yue, his secret safe for another day. As the dawn broke over Yue, high school, Izuka found himself contemplating the events of the previous night's mission as he made his way to campus. The adrenaline of battle still coursed through his veins a reminder of the challenges he faced and the victories he achieved. Despite the allure of resting on his laurels, Izuku knew that there was no time to waste. With each passing day, the shadows of villainy loomed larger, and the need for heroes grew more urgent. Entering the bustling halls of Yue, Izuku was greeted by the familiar sights and sounds of student life. As he made his way to his homeroom, he couldn't help but feel a sense of camaraderie with his classmates each of whom bore the weight of their own aspirations and ambitions. Throughout the day, Izuku remained focused and determined, his mind buzzing with thoughts of the challenges that lay ahead. With the UA Sports Festival on the horizon, he knew that the time for preparation was now, and he resolved to push himself to new heights in pursuit of victory. In class, Izuku found himself engrossed in his studies, his thoughts drifting to the lessons learned on the battlefield, and the skills honed in the crucible of combat. As his classmates engaged in lively discussions and debates, he listened intently, absorbing every word with a keen sense of purpose. Despite the weight of his responsibilities, Izuka couldn't help but feel a sense of optimism for the future. With each passing day, he grew stronger, more determined, and more resolved to uphold the ideals of heroism that had guided him on his journey thus far. Lunchtime. As the lunch bell chimed, Signaling the much-anticipated break from classes, the students of Class 1 filed out of their classrooms and made their way to the bustling cafeteria. Amidst the lively chatter and laughter, Izuku found himself approached by his curious classmates, their eager expressions betraying their burning questions. Hey, Midoriya, called out Ichaki Uraraka, waving him over to their table. Come sit with us. We've been dying to talk to you about your training. Izuku nodded with a small smile joining his classmates as they eagerly awaited his response. Taking a seat among them, he couldn't help but feel a sense of warmth and camaraderie, a reminder of the bonds forged through shared experiences and shared aspirations. So, Midoriya, began Denki Kaminari, leaning in with a grin, we've all been wondering just how powerful are you? And what kind of training do you do to be so strong? Izuka chuckled softly, a hint of modesty coloring his tone. Well, it's nothing too special, really, he replied, scratching the back of his head. Just basic training with a few tweaks to keep things challenging. But honestly, I wouldn't recommend it to anyone here. It's tailored to my needs and won't necessarily help with your quirk training. The class nodded in understanding, though their curiosity remained unabated. They listened intently as Izuka recounted tales of grueling workouts, rigorous sparring sessions, and the relentless pursuit of self-improvement. With each word, their admiration for their classmate only grew, their eyes shining with a newfound respect. However, amidst the supportive atmosphere, there lingered an undercurrent of skepticism. In the background, Bakugu watched with a sneer, his lips curled into a disdainful smirk. Despite Izuku's assurances that he possessed no quirk, Bakugu remained stubbornly convinced otherwise, his pride refusing to accept anything less than superiority. I'll figure out what quirk you have, Deku, he muttered under his breath, his eyes narrowing with determination. And when I do, I'll prove once and for all that I'm the strongest. 
Mamoyo Warozu, always the voice of reason and initiative, leaned forward, her eyes alight with a spark of determination. Midoriya, would you be willing to teach us some martial arts techniques? Many of us lack experience in hand-to-hand combat, and I believe your expertise could greatly benefit the class. Izuka considered a request for a moment, a thoughtful expression crossing his features. I'd be happy to help, however, I always have a full schedule, so I'll need to check when I'm available, he replied, his tone earnest. But I want to be clear learning martial arts takes time and dedication. It won't happen overnight, and you'll need to practice regularly to see improvement. The class nodded in agreement, their eagerness tempered by a newfound understanding of the commitment required. They knew that mastering martial arts wouldn't be easy, but with Izuku's guidance and their own determination, they were willing to put in the effort. Thank you, Midoriya, said Momo, her gratitude evident in her voice. We'll do our best to keep an open mind and work hard to improve. With a nod of affirmation, Izuku smiled, reassured by the class's willingness to learn. Great, he said, a sense of purpose infusing his words. Let's get started then. Remember, it's not about being the strongest, it's about becoming the best version of ourselves. As the school alarms blared throughout the corridors of UA, high panic crippled through the students like a shockwave. Wide-eyed and frantic, they scrambled to make sense of the sudden chaos, their voices rising in a cacophony of fear and uncertainty. Izuku remained surprisingly calm amid the commotion, his focus unwavering as he approached one of the senior students who appeared to be in a state of distress. Excuse me, sir, he called out over the din of the alarm. What is the alarm for? The senior student turned to him, panic etched into every line of his face. You don't know? he exclaimed, his voice trembling with fear. It means someone has broken through the UA barrier, which means a villain attack. The gravity of the situation sank in as Izuku absorbed the senior's words. A chill ran down his spine, but he forced himself to remain composed, his mind already racing with thoughts of what needed to be done next. Turning to the rest of the class, Izuku's voice rang out clear and steady above the chaos. Listen up, everyone, he called out, his tone commanding. We need to remain calm and follow the emergency procedures. Stick together and stay vigilant. We'll get through this together. As the chaos of the alarm continued to reverberate through the corridors, Izuka closed his eyes, focusing his mind and tapping into the depths of his kai. With a practiced calm, he extended his senses, probing the surrounding area for any signs of disturbance or danger. After a few tense moments, he detected a faint ripple in the energy around them, a telltale sign of an anomaly. Opening his eyes, he addressed the class with a measured tone. It's just a false alarm, he announced, his voice cutting through the clamor. There's no villain attack, just the media causing a stir. As his words sank in, a wave of relief swept through the students, their panic subsiding as they realized they were not in immediate danger. Murmurs of reassurance rippled through the group, and gradually, the tension in the air began to ease. But Izuku's expression remained stern as he looked out at his classmates. If you're going to act like scared little children over something as small as a false alarm, he continued, his voice firm, then you shouldn't be trying to become heroes. Heroes must remain composed in the face of danger, always ready to act decisively and protect others. As words hung in the air, a sober reminder of the responsibility they bore as aspiring heroes, and as the students reflected on his admonition, a newfound determination flickered in their eyes their resolve strengthened by the reminder of what it truly meant to be a hero. After lunch, later in the bustling halls of Yue, Hi, Izuku found himself approached by several of the teachers, their expressions a mixture of relief and gratitude. Present Mick, his voice booming as always, clapped a hand on Izuku's shoulder. Hey kid, thanks for keeping a level head out there. You really helped calm the students down. Ozawa, standing nearby with his usual stoic demeanor, nodded in agreement. Yes, your quick thinking prevented a panic from spreading. Well done. Even All Might, towering above them with his trademark smile, chimed in. Indeed, young Midoriya, your composure in the face of chaos is truly commendable. Thank you for your assistance. No first-year student should possess such composure under the threat of a villain attack, even a false one, thought All Might while still believing Izuku is connected to all for one. Izuku nodded in acknowledgement, but beneath the surface, he felt a pang of disappointment. 
disappointment in his fellow students, who aspired to become heroes yet crumbled at the first sign of adversity. In his mind, heroes were meant to be beacons of strength and courage, unwavering in the face of danger. But the reaction he had witnessed only served to underscore the vast gulf between their aspirations and their reality. It was nothing, Izuka muttered, his tone subdued. But it's disheartening to see so many aspiring heroes get rattled by something as trivial as a false alarm. If they can handle a simple scare, how can they hope to face real threats in the future? His words hung heavy in the air, a sobering reminder of the challenges that lay ahead. As the teachers exchanged knowing glances, Izuku couldn't help but wonder if his classmates would ever truly understand what it meant to be a hero. But Nizu and the teachers. As Nizu, accompanied by several teachers, approached Izuku with a request, the gravity of the situation weighed heavily on the young student's shoulders. He understood the severity of the breach in security and the potential implications it could have for Yue. High school. Izuku, Nizu began, his tone, grave, we need your assistance with a matter of utmost importance. It appears that the media somehow breached our security measures and gained access to the school grounds. We need to determine how this happened and ensure that it doesn't occur again. Izuku nodded, his mind already racing with possibilities. I'll do whatever I can to help, he replied earnestly, determined to prove his worth despite All Might's skepticism. All Might interjected, his voice tinged with doubt. With all due respect, Nizu, I'm not sure if Midoriya is the best candidate for this task. While he may excel in crisis situations, I have my doubts about his investigative abilities. Nizu regarded All Might with a knowing look before turning back to Izuku. All Might raises a valid point, Izuku. However, your unique perspective and intuition may prove invaluable in this matter. We have no reason to believe that you shouldn't assist us. The other teachers murmured their agreement, their expressions a mix of concern and determination. Izuku felt a surge of gratitude for their trust in him, a sense of duty compelling him to rise to the occasion. I won't let you down, Izuku vowed, steeling himself for the challenge ahead. With Nizu and the teachers at his side, he knew that together, they would uncover the truth behind the breach and safeguard the security of UA. High School At the UA Gate As they surveyed the wreckage of the UA Gate, All Might's suspicions lingered, his gaze fixed on Izuka with a mix of concern and uncertainty. Midoriya, are you suggesting that someone deliberately disintegrated the gate? He inquired, his voice tinged with skepticism. Izuku nodded, his eyes scanning the remains with a keen focus. Yes, All Might, he confirmed, his tone resolute. Based on the lack of physical damage and the presence of dust rather than ash, it's evident that the destruction was intentional and precise. Nizu, impressed by Izuku's deduction, chimed in. Indeed, Midoriya's observations are astute. It appears that the perpetrator possessed the ability to disintegrate the gate without leaving any discernible traces. The other teachers murmured their agreement, acknowledging Izuku's analytical prowess and his ability to discern alternative possibilities. However, All Might's thoughts remained troubled as he contemplated the implications of Izuku's deduction. In All Might's mind, a chilling realization began to take shape. If Izuka's deductions were correct, then the perpetrator possessed a formidable quirk, one that could potentially rival even All Might's own power. The thought sent a shiver down All Might's spine, stirring his dormant fears of the elusive villain, all for one. Though he remained composed on the surface, All Might couldn't shake the nagging suspicion that Izuka Midoriya's involvement in this incident ran deeper than anyone could have anticipated. As they continued their investigation, all might resolve to keep a close eye on the enigmatic young student, his mind fraught with apprehension and uncertainty about what the future might hold. However, Izuka wasn't finished. With a furrowed brow, he pointed to a specific area of the gate where the disintegration had originated. Moreover, he continued, the method of destruction suggests a calculated motive. This wasn't a random act of vandalism or an attempt to breach UA.S security. It was targeted, precise, and purposeful. Niza leaned in, his curiosity piqued. And what do you believe the purpose of this attack was, Midoriya? Izuka paused, his expression grave. I believe the perpetrator sought something specific within Yue. He explained, his voice measured. Whether it was information, an object, or perhaps even a person, their intention was to obtain something of value. And until we uncover the true motive behind this attack— 
Yue remains vulnerable to further threats. Niza nodded thoughtfully, absorbing Izuka's insights. Well said, Midoriya. Your keen observations have shed new light on this situation. We must remain vigilant and investigate this matter thoroughly. As the teachers began discussing their next steps, All Might's gaze lingered on Izuku, a sense of admiration mingled with apprehension in his eyes. It was clear that this young student possessed a remarkable intellect and intuition, qualities that could prove invaluable in the face of future challenges. However, All Might couldn't shake the lingering doubt that hovered in the back of his mind, an egging uncertainty about Izuku's true intentions and the role he might play in the events yet to unfold. Beach SCHU Izuka stood before the members of the BHSC, his expression serious as he relayed the details of the recent incident at UA. As you are aware, he began, the UA gate was intentionally destroyed by an unknown perpetrator. While we have yet to determine the full extent of their motives, it's clear that UA is facing a potential threat. The members of the BHSC listened intently, their demeanor attentive as Izuku outlined his plan. I propose that we deploy additional security measures to safeguard Class 1A, he continued. They will soon be heading to the unforeseen simulation joint for training, and given the recent events, I believe it's crucial to ensure their safety. One of the members, a stern-faced man with a no-nonsense demeanor, raised an eyebrow skeptically. Are you suggesting that you cannot handle this task alone, Hit? he inquired, his tone laced with skepticism. Izuku shook his head his expression grave. Normally, I wouldn't hesitate to take on such a responsibility myself, he explained. However, I must remain undercover to fulfill my obligations to the HPSC and keep a close watch on certain individuals, including All Might and Momoyo Iroza. Besides, even with my abilities, I can't be everywhere at once. The members exchanged glances, a silent conversation passing between them as they deliberated Izuku's proposal. After a moment of consideration, the stern-faced man nodded. Very well, hit, he said, his tone begrudgingly accepting. We'll grant your request for additional security measures at UA. Izuka nodded, a sense of relief washing over him. Thank you, he said sincerely, his gratitude evident in his tone. Your support is greatly appreciated, and I'm confident that together, we can ensure the safety of everyone at UA. With the backing of the BHSC, Izuka felt a renewed sense of determination. As they finalized their plans, he couldn't help but feel a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty that lay ahead. With their combined efforts, he knew that they would be ready to face whatever challenges awaited them at the unforeseen simulation joint. Izuka stood before Agent Swift, Fang, and Tiger, explaining the situation with a pompous demeanor. Thank you for agreeing to assist with the security detail, he began, addressing the three agents. Your presence will be invaluable in ensuring the safety of Class 1A during their training at the unforeseen simulation joint. Agent Swift nodded, her expression determined. You can count on us, hit, she affirmed, a steely glint in her eyes. We'll remain hidden until the need arises for us to intervene. Agent Fong cracked her knuckles, a confident smirk playing on her lips. We'll be like shadows in the night, she declared, her tone brimming with assurance. No one will even know we're there until it's too late. Agent Tiger nodded in agreement, her expression focused. We'll patrol the area nearby, she confirmed, her voice steady. If anyone asks, we'll simply say we were on patrol when we heard the commotion at the USJ. Izuka nodded in appreciation, a sense of reassurance washing over him. Thank you, he said sincerely, his gratitude evident in his tone. Your support means a lot, and I trust that with your assistance— we'll be able to handle whatever comes our way. With the additional security measures in place, Izuka felt a renewed sense of confidence. As they finalized their plans, he couldn't help but feel a sense of relief, knowing that Class 1A would have the protection they needed during their training at the unforeseen simulation joint. At home with Izuku and Inko, Izuku sat across from his mother, Inko, recounting the events of the day with unwavering honesty. Today at school was eventful, he began his voice steady as he detailed the incidents that had occurred. There was an unexpected alarm, but it turned out to be a false alarm caused by the media trying to get into UA. Enko listened intently, concern etched on her features as she absorbed his words. Are you all right, Izuku? She asked, her voice laced with worry. Did anything happen to you? Izuku offered her a reassuring smile. 
I'm fine, Mom, he reassured her, placing a hand on hers. Nothing happened to me. I handled the situation just like I always do. Inko sighed, her worry evident in her eyes. I know you're capable, Izuku, she said softly, her voice tinged with maternal concern. But I can't help but worry about you. You're my son, after all. Izuku squeezed her hand gently, offering her a comforting smile. I know, Mom, he replied, his tone gentle, but you raised me to be strong and independent. I'll always be careful, I promise. Inko nodded, her expression filled with a mix of pride and apprehension. Just promise me you'll stay safe, she said softly, her voice wavering slightly. Izuka's smile widened, his determination shining through. I always do, Mom, he said confidently, and I've never failed a mission yet. But that reassurance, Inko smiled, her worries momentarily eased. All right, Izuku, she said, her voice filled with maternal affection. Just remember to be careful out there. Izuku nodded, a sense of determination settling over him. I will, Mom, he promised, his gaze unwavering. I always do. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and comment below your favorite part. Don't forget to support the author and his story in the description. Sayonara see you in the next video.